devotee care, leadership, and it will continue with sharing preaching strategies. Uh, and so for devotees that are interested in sharing the preaching projects that are taking place, please uh, send me your information because following we're gonna have an Ishtagosti. Uh, so for the Ishtagosti, that will be a place where you can ask questions. And so if you have any questions that you would like to ask, please send it to me via the chat and I will put your name on the list. And also if you'd like to be included for the preaching strategies and updates of devotee projects around the world, please contact me uh, via the chat and I will put your name on the list so you can speak uh, during that time. So we are gonna wrap it up with a wonderful kirtan with, and questions. First, questions with uh, His Holiness Radhana Swami and Bhutta Bhavana will interview. And following that, we're going to have a nice cure time. And that will be our wonderful three-day weekend. So I look forward to uh, welcoming everyone. I wanna briefly give the Russian translators a moment to allow devotees to know what is taking place in Russian. So we're gonna take a two minute pause. Uh, you could you could you introduce the Russian translation? I think Anna can't do it because she is assigned to be the translator. So if you could please you could Thank you. I think maybe he can't either because let me help. um let me just remove him as a translator in case that's why. Okay, okay. Now you go, Amarpur. Please do it again. Uh -huh. If you can, if you can introduce the translating again, because it, we couldn't hear you before. Uh -huh. Sorry. You got Amar Prabhu, are you there? Yes, I I, uh, I hear, but uh, there is no translation in the Russian auditory. So uh, I could hear it before. Did you you cho you chose the setting in the translation settings? Mm -hmm. Sorry. It's down in the bottom of the Zoom options. There's like a little globe icon, and you can choose the language there. Mm -hmm. Okay, can uh, okay, you just uh, continue, please. I don't know what's what's happening. Okay, uh, that's fine. If you yeah, carry on, um, Krishna Shakti. Sorry. Right. So we're gonna continue with a kirtan. Uh, by Nilamani. Nilamani is a devotee from London, a pioneer of the Pandavasena program. And due to her amazing preaching in Pandavasena, she made one several wonderful devotees, such as our dear Krishna uh, Chitti Shakti. Uh, she's a medical doctor who gave up medicine to serve her dear husband, Naveen Krishna, who is the director of Avanti schools, along with other programs in the UK. So we're going to allow uh, Nilamani to have a 10 minute cure time. Hi Krishna, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rajati. Um, uh, sorry, Krishna Shakti Devi, thank you so much. Um, so please, from wherever you guys are uh, around the world, please join me in this kirtan to really uh, pray for Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj's blessings on this very auspicious and wonderful occasion of his Vyasa Puja 2021. Thank you. Shri Krishna, 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 Shri
Thank you so much. That was so beautiful. Beautiful way to set the tone, the mood. Beautiful offering to Gurudev Jai. Thank you very much, Nilamani. All right, now we're going to have Ekavira Prabhu uh, present and also welcome everyone here. Uh, everyone knows Ekavira Prabhu but I get the honor to just give a brief summary of his background. So Ekavira Das is one of the among the first persons to join His Holiness Bhaktachirtha Swami with the development of the Inst Institute for Applied Spiritual Technology, also known as IFAST in Washington, DC. While serving with IFAST, he was employed as an account representative for a Fortune 500 company until His Holiness Bhaktichircha Swami requested him to assume a managerial role in Yidanagri, Port Royal, Pennsylvania. Under the guidance of His Holiness Bhaktichircha Swami, he served as temple president for nine years, assisting reestablishing the community and its projects. In 2004, on the request of His Holiness Bhaktichircha Swami, he served along with his wife as Maharaj's primary caregivers until his departure in 2005. He is a trained hospice caregiver, a certified holistic health consultant, as well as a recent graduate from Karuna Care Education Program. He has been serving devotees in hospice care since 2004 and more recently in pastor, uh, pastoral counseling. He served on the GBC International Devotee Care Committee, and currently he and his wife serve as one of the members of the International Grihas Division team. He and his wife offer a variety of workshops and seminars on different aspects of nurturing Krishna conscious relationships. One aspect of devotee care that uh, gives him joy is to encourage others and personally take shelter of the holy names of the Lord. Let us welcome Akavira Prabhu. Hey, thank you so much, Krishna Shakti. And it's so wonderful to see all the wonderful faces of the devotees throughout the world. Um, let me offer a brief prayer to our beloved Guru Maharaj and Srila Prabhupada before we speak a little. Nama Om Vishnu Vinaya Krishna Vastaya Bhutale, Shimate Bhakti Swam Nita Namane, Namaste Krishna Vinaya Prabhupada Shtat, may she go to Karan Shakti Bhakti Namo Vishnu Vinaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale, Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinami, Namaste Sarasvati Devi, Gauravani Pacharni, Nivashesha Shunyavadi Pasta Chandri Sukhani, Panchi Kalpaturu Vishak, Vapas and Dubyevacha, Titanam Pavnibyo, Vaishnam Nibyo Namo Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna Titan Pavuna Tananda Svedveta Gadar Harshivas, the Go Bhakti Vedanta. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hari Hari. That was an absolutely wonderful kirtan. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was just ooh, off the hook. So special. We, um, on behalf of the UK Yatra, I would like to welcome you all to the 71st annual Vyasa Puja of our beloved Guru Maharaj, His Holiness, His Holiness Bhakti Tirta Swami. His Holiness Bhakti Tirta Swami Maharaj, Ki Jai. Yeah. <laughs> so we thank um, the devotees in the UK Yatra for putting together this wonderful program and especially um, Dhruva Prabhu, Dhruva Maharaj Prabhu. We understand he spent so many hours uh, tire tirelessly uh, putting together the schedule and making arrangements so that we all can gather together and honor uh, His Holiness Bhakti Tirta Swami. And then there's so many devotees in the UK uh, Yatra that are working in the background. Um, they are all examples for us in the mood of Dasa Dasa Anadasa. So thank you so much for your, all of your efforts. Um, when I was reviewing uh, the schedule this morning, I couldn't help but to think of the words of uh, Gurudev that was coined by uh, his mother, Mother Pearlene. We are blessed by the best. <laughs> we are blessed by the best to have such a gathering, three days, a three-day Vyasa Puja gathering um, to honor our Gurudev. And what would they uh, Vyasa Puja gathering be without his beloved and illustrious God brothers, His Holiness Radha Swami and His Holiness Chandramali Swami. We are truly blessed, blessed by their association 
we are blessed by uh, our beloved God brothers, uh, uh, Bhakti Charadesh Maharaj, three different sannyasis, Bhakti Charadesh Maharaj, who would do the Nishringa Yagya, and uh, Bhakti Dear Damodar Maharaj, who will be a part of the Global Summit, and, and Bhakti Vasudev Maharaj will speak on leadership, and then uh, devotee care will be done by, who is, I don't recognize this person. Oh, Rajalila, just kidding. <laughs> My beloved wife, Rajalila, uh, who is um, an example of devotee care, serving devotees throughout the world and has been doing so for over 40 years now. Um, and that will take place uh, during the Global S Summit. And of course, Krishna Shakti, she went over the schedule. Um, so we won't go over the complete schedule here. But we're blessed also by Sri Sapanishad, the childhood friend of Gurudev. And then the family of Guru Maharaj will be here and the Cleveland Yatra and all the Yatras throughout the world, Europe, Australia, UK and Russia, and Ivory Coast, Zambia, Ghana, Nigeria, and here in the United States. And I know I'm missing so many devotees, but, so please forgive me. We hope we have enough time that all of the devotees that the desire to make an offering to Bhakti Tetra Swami will be able to do so. Um, so, as we gather to this weekend, let us give honor, let us give respect, let us um, praise and glorify our beloved Guru Maharaj and, and encourage each other, uplift each other, inspire each other in our services to Srila Prabhupada and in different yatras throughout the world. We are truly blessed by our God family. We are truly blessed to be in the ISKCON family. We are truly blessed to be in the Gotra of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so as we have this, this gathering, let's, let us reflect on the good fortune that our Guru Maharaj has made for us, that a good, our good fortune that Srila uh, um, Prabhupada has made for us. And let us pray that we all realize that we are truly blessed by the best. So thank <laughs> you so much. And <laughs> we hope that everyone has a wonderful 71st annual Vyasa Puja of His Holiness Bhakti Tetra Swami. His Holiness Bhakti Tetra Swami Maharaj Ki Jai. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. my best. Too blessed to be depressed, regressed, uh, trying to pass all God's tests. Bernadette Satterfield, his sister. Jai. Thank you for that, Bernadette. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you okay, so much. I want to take a shot, so I hope I can come up first. Okay, okay, definitely. We uh, have a, just a few more things and then we'll definitely let you go. Do you have about 20 minutes? Can... Yes, I do have 20 minutes. All right, looking forward to hearing from you soon. Sure. Thanks. All right, so thank you so much, Echo Vera. You did a very nice introduction, welcoming everyone here. Now we're going to get into our Nrsinga Yagya that we're about to have in His Holiness Bhakti Charundeshna Swami. He is from uh, Abedijan, Ivory Coast. In 1989, he was initiated by His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami and received second initiation in 1995. That same year, he also became a temple president. Since 2010, he has been traveling and preaching in different places such as Togo, Nigeria, Ghana, Benin, South Africa, and Mauritius. November 2020, His Holiness Bhakti Charundeshna Swami Maharaj has become an initiating guru in ISKCON under Kavichandra Maharaj. Uh, devotees regard Maharaj as someone caring and friendly and is always open to answer any questions. Uh, so, he speaks fluent French and English, and it, he has been blessing devotees all over the world with his preaching. We look forward to his yagya. Let's welcome Maharaj. Yes, it is a, a great pleasure and an honor for me to perform this uh, yagya. For the pleasure of uh, Srila Bhakti Chita Swami, our Gurudev, our Timas Gurudev, 
And uh, when Dhruva Prabhu asked me to do the Jagya, I said, uh, look, I'm not an expert, <laughs> Ushari or Jagya performer, but he insisted. And uh, I knew that uh, Gurudev loved Nishingadev very much. He has Nishingadev ring, he has Nishingadev cane. He always prayed to Nishingadev for protection, protecting ISKCON, protecting devotees, protecting himself. So uh, I saw that, uh, I mean, an uh, invitation from uh, Dhruva, Dhruva Maharaj Prabhu that uh, it was a blessing this guy from Gurudev. Because I also have uh, so many stuff from Narasimhadev. You can see this, uh, this ring from Narasimhadev. I have a Narasimhadev t-shirt. I have a uh, Narasimhadev uh, oil. Yes, so Narasimhadev is protecting all the devotees. So it's kind of uh, doing this project like uh, Adivas, you know, for this uh, ceremony. So uh, in, the, in the temple room, we have Bhaktisita uh, Maharaj Den, the Yatasam. We have a big uh, uh, Narasimha picture from Mayapu. Like that and some devotees are also around here. So uh, it is a pleasure for me and an honor to do this Jaya Gya Gya. And uh, I've been looking forward for more blessing from Gurudev since he left. But I think today is uh, uh, an opportunity for me to uh, get that blessing and the blessing of, uh, of, of the devotees also. So according to Dhruva Maharaj Prabhu, the Jaya uh, Gya has to last 15 minutes, but I don't think it's possible. Maybe. 10 minutes more. Yes. So uh, we will uh, first uh, do a small roti, then uh, chant some Gurudev Pranam and uh, start. Because we have few time. Hare Krishna. So if we do this one harati and uh, we start. Then you want to do
For the uh, for the pleasure, and the honor of Sri uh, Bhakti Samaraj Gurudev. So uh, we want more blessing from him. He said uh, that uh, when we leave the planet, you will be more available for blessing the disciple and well wishers. So I have personally seen that in my uh, my life. So as I said, it's a very great pleasure and blessing for me. From this journey, I hope. Well, they will be happy and the devotees also. Hare Krishna. So now we chant the uh, uh, Gurudev uh, Pranam and the uh, Parapara Pranam. And then one or eight names of Narasimha uh, Dev. Om Janam Timnadasya Jana Jana Salakaya Chakshu Minitam Minakashma Shikura Vinamaha Swaha 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 Sri Sitana Manavitam Sata Inabutale Swayamupa Kadam Swaha 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 Pandyam Sri Guru Shuta Bada Kamalam Sri Guru Mahasuramcha Yurupam Savaritam Muragunatam Tam Sajibam Sarvetam Savaritam Paritam Paritam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Bada Sajananita Sri Guru Mahasuramcha Swaha 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 Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Kirta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Krishna Padaya Prabhupada Satmane Shri Gaura Karuna Sakti Bhakti Kirti Namine Swaha 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 Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saravas Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Patsatari Satarine Swaha 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 Okay, now we will uh, think the one more eight mantras from the Mantras from the Shinati. Om Narasimha Namaha Swaha 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 Om Mahasma Namaha Swaha 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 Om Divya Smaha Namaha Swaha 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 Om Mahabharaya Namaha Swaha 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 
Om Mugra Smaha Namaha Swaha 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 Om Mahadevaya Namaha Swaha 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 Om Sambhajaya Namaha Swaha 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 Om Mugra Lutanaya Namaha Swaha 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 Om Rudhaya Namaha Swaha 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 Om Sarva Buddhaya Namaha Swaha 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 Om Swausi Om Sri Manaya Namaha Swaha 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 Om Yugandaya Namaha Swaha 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 Om Trivikramaya Namaha Swaha 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 Om Hine Namaha Swaha 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 Om Kulaya Namaha Om Takrine Namaha Om Jaya Namaha Om Jaya Bandhanaya Namaha Om Param Brahma Haya Namaha Om Akuraya Namaha Om Galam Mukhaya Namaha Om Dvala Maline Namaha Swa 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 Om Hajvalaya Om Mahajvala Namaha Swa 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 Om Mahaprabhuya Namaha Swa 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 Om Niti Lakshaya Namaha Swa 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 Om Sahasrakshaya Namaha Swa 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 Om Dhanikshaya Namaha Swa 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 Om Pratapanaya Namaha Swa 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 Om Mahadansaya Namaha Swa 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 Om Buddha Parishnaya Namaha Swaha 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 Om Buddha Parishnaya Namaha Swaha 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 Om Tanda Kupine Namaha Swaha 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 Om Sadashivaya Namaha Swaha 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 Om Nenakashipu Vansine Namaha Swa 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 Om Dekya Danava Vandanaya Namaha Swa 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 Om Guna Bhatraya Namaha Swa 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 Om Mahabhadraya Namaha Swa 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 Om Balabhadraya Namaha Swa 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 Om Subhadra Kaya Namaha Swa 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 Om Karalaya Namaha Swa 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 Om 
ओम परमात्मा नम Thank you very much for the auspicious blessings. Thank you very much, Maharaj. All right, next week. Hare Krishna. Maharaj Ki Jai. Evil. All right, so now we are going to have a reading from Mother Jambavati, and I'm going to give a brief bio from her. She's going to read the uh, Vyasa Puja offering. Uh, Mother Jambavati was among uh, many of those who joined the IFAST as a result of attending um, Maharaja's programs at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Uh, she has been initiated and, in her words, aspiring, an aspiring disciple for 29 years. From 1995 to 2002, she simultaneously served as one of Bhaktichirtha Swami's U.S. secretaries and director of Harinam Press. Of one of the many hats that she has worn included 
uh, coordinator of book publishing, book signings, media interviews, interfaith program lectures, seminars, and other IFAS activities that featured Bhakti Tirtha Swami. Just recently, she accepted an invitation to reconnect with the editing team for publishing additional Bhakti Tirtha Swami books. As a member of the Gita Nagri's congregational community, Jamavadi is one of several devotees that assists with the maintenance and upkeep of Bhakti Tirtha Swami Samadhi. Let us welcome Mother Jambavati. Hare Krishna devotees. All oh, glories to Shor Prabhupada. I was just listening to an initiation uh, tape of Maharaj that was given on February the 25th of uh, 1999 here in Gita Nagari. And one of the instructions that he gave is that for us to pay respects to his spiritual master by chanting his pranam first. And so I will follow that instruction. Namaste, Krishna Padai, Prabhupada, Shrikatame, Shri Guru, Pranachana, Prabhupada, Guru, Namaste, Jai. So thank you, uh, Krishna Shakti, for engaging me in this service on this most auspicious day. So this is His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami's 2004 offering. Dear Srila Prabhupada, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to you as our eternal father and grandfather. I would like to have written you this very simple but meaningful offering this year. Dear Srila Prabhupada, you have given us, all of us, so much that we can never fully repay you but we can only make some small attempts. Where would we all have been if you had not come into our lives? If we had material success without you, this would have increased our illusions. If we had material failures without you, this would have increased our confusion. You have given us such an awesome family. We are so colorful and diversified in every way. This creates wonderful challenges, adventures, and so many wonderful opportunities to serve each other and to serve others together. It is so wonderful to see how your real leaders are so determined to remain loyal to you at any cost. It is so exciting to see how many are maturing more as first-class sadhus. And it is amazing how, though we may fight amongst ourselves, when it comes to protecting your house and your legacy, we stand united. It is even more astonishing how you are beginning to call some of your leaders and followers back to join you in, your, in their eternal service to you. You have captured their hearts and they have captured yours. However, dear Srila Prabhupada, many of your disciples and grand disciples, as well as Guru Kulis are stuck with so many Anarthas as bad or worse, some are experiencing great suffering, even more than before they join Krishna consciousness. For now, they have so much knowledge, but too many bad habits, attachments, fears, and lack of faith. So now I am 55 years old. I never expected to live this long. You have given me a wonderful Krishna conscious life. I have experienced practically everything I wanted to experience 
in material as well as spiritual arenas. I have even just finished another 35 country world tour in your service. So in the mood of Vasudev Dat, I would like to ask you, can you arrange that their sufferings come to me so that many can be free from their anguish and thus joyfully serve you and return to Krishna with fewer encumbrances. After all, I and many others have procrastinated in so many ways in our full surrender. So in this way, you will force me to fully surrender while helping many others. Only if you force me to become a pure son will I be of any significant value for your mission. Prepare me to become a divine slave who is fully captured by your and Radha and Krishna's love. After all, I asked all the devotees around the world in the year of 2004 in Mayapur at the Panchatattva installation to pray with me. Whatever we need in order to better serve and to better serve or better or be better servants for Srila Prabhupada's mission. Let it happen or come to us. And whatever we need to have taken away to become pure in Srila Prabhupada's service, let it be taken away. So in this spirit, I submit my offering to you for the year 2005. I want to try to give back so much I owe to you and have received from you. I have one year to fully present and mean this offering. Or will you, dear Srila Prabhupada, see fit to accept this offering for this year of 2004? Your servant. Bhakti Tirtha Swami. So I just wanted to say very quickly that this was the prayer that many of uh, His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami's disciples were asking him to take back. However, um, he always said that the measure of success of life and what it means to be a devotee is how we are compassionate towards those that are suffering suffering, and how to alleviate that suffering of others. And so this is definitely um, an example and a mood that we can try to imbibe to follow in his footsteps. His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami Maharaj Ki. Ah, thank you so much, Mother Jambavati. All right, so next we have Mother Shusha Panishad and uh, Gurudev's family and friends. Mother Shusha Panishad attended the same high school with Gurudev, but began uh, her Krishna journey after high school, uh, where they were both introduced uh, to Krishna consciousness later. Uh, Mother Shusha Panishad has been promoting and marketing his spiritual warrior series and libraries all over the world. She's beginning this project and we look forward to seeing the results all over the world in Gurudev's spirit. Uh, she has consistently continued the Japa line for over a decade, which was also inspired by Gurudev. And she also continues uh, daily Bhagavatam classes in the morning. I'd like to happily invite Mother Shri Shapanisha to chair the upcoming two panels. The first one uh, with friends and family of Gurudev and then the next one, the Cleveland Yatra. Hari Hari Bo. Hari Bo. Hari Hari Bo, Hari Krishna. Assalamu alaikum. Peace and love. Hi everyone. Hari Bo. <laughs> Hari Krishna. Hare Krishna. I, I am so excited. <laughs> you know, you guys. I was sitting here, you know, just you know, waiting, and now we're we have to start. Uh, there are a couple people that have to leave in the family. Uh, Bernadette, she has to go and receive a a. Uh, shot okay as she said so and Parvati has to leave and we're just going to get started first of all I must offer my Panam prayers 
Namo Vishnu Badaya Krishna Vasaya Bhutile Sri Madhi Bhakti Tirta Swami Nityanamane Namaste Krishna Pad Prabhupada Vitmane Sri Guru Guru Shakti Bhakti Tirta Dinamane. Now we can begin. Hare Krishna. Okay, Ma Bernadette, we're going to invite Bernadette Guru's sister to begin our uh, wonderful discourse and sharing of her brother. Bernadette, you have the floor. You have the mic, I should say. <laughs> Thank you, and welcome, everybody. And I'd like to share a story. I was 10, and he was 6. And he was always so good and always praying all the time. And I was just so jealous of him. I threw some pepper in his eye. And you know what he told me? He said, I forgive you, and I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> oh, Oh, on top of that, I got a beating with a rose bush. And he, and he begged my mom not to beat me because he forgave me. <laughs> and I thought, I, thought, I thought that was so sweet of him. And my sister's not here, Judy. I wish I was able to, to have seen this, but I didn't. But she saw it. It was raining. And it only rained on him and nobody else. <laughs> so I hate to leave, but I gotta go and get this second booster corona shot. And I'd like to say hello to everyone and I love you all. And I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, Bernie. Got that. Yeah. Thank you, Bernie. Thank, Thank you, Bernie. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Okay, I think I seen uh, Marguerite, uh, Maharaja's sister Marguerite. She's on. Marguerite, how do you both? Yes, I am. Uh, is my is my audio on? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm very very grateful to God to be here today and for the honor that is being shown to our baby brother. We called him Johnny Boy, and um, I had um, God has blessed me to write um, two books and. Book one, second edition, which is coming up, I have sent uh, to ISIS the dedication for that book, that, and that would probably come out next year. The other ones are on Amazon, and they're called, called Words of Peace and Love by Marguerite Evans Brooks, book one and book two. And the dedication for the one that will probably come out next year, book one, I've sent the dedication to ISIS, and I'd like for her to read that to you. I am visually impaired, and I, I read with with a screen reader or with, you know, audio reading. So I says, would you please read that dedication? And that, yes, I will. That speaks what I feel about my younger brother, Johnny Boy. Go ahead, Isis. Thank you. Wonderful. Can we, can I, can you, can I be heard? Heidi Bowl, can you hear me, everyone? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, John Heidi Bowl. Uh, dedication. With love and great joy, I dedicate this book in memory of our youngest brother, John Favors. Johnny Boy answered God's call. As a child, he was a blessing to our family. As an adult, God used him to be a blessing to nations. For many years, John had a speech impediment. He could hardly complete a sentence without stuttering. He would try very hard to make a statement. Sometimes he would stump his foot on the floor as he tried to get his words out. Yet, God removed his stammering and replaced it with words that flows throughout the nations. I can best describe our brother John with the following scriptures. Jeremiah 1, 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Five, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I adorned thee a prophet unto the nations. Six, then said I, our Lord God, Behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou go to all of, the, all of that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Eight, be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Nine, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. It brings me joy to my heart and puts a joy of smile on my face to include also in this dedication, my other brother, Paul, and my three sisters, Francis, Julia, and Bernadette. 
Our love for our Lord God Almighty and for each other is our common bond. For this love, we shall give God the glory. He blessed us with a mother who taught us about Jesus and showered us with words of peace and love. I am forever grateful for our family and our love for and our support of each other. Heidi Bo. And that is a dedication that will be for the second edition of book one that is coming up. I had it for book two, the second edition that has just been published and is online now. But somehow I decided to change it and dedicate book two to my mother and my aunt and have the second book, book one dedicated to my brother, John. But again, John was, he is a little, that kind of says what I have to say about him. John loved his extended family throughout the world and throughout the nations. And he also loved his immediate family. And he demonstrated that in very many ways. So God bless each of you. And thank you for the honor that you're giving my brother. He, he said to me one time, he said, you know, that he had asked God, he, that he saw so many sufferings all over the world. And he had asked the Lord to let him you know, carry those sufferings. And when I heard what was just read by the mother a short while ago, it brought to mind that he did say that. I didn't understand it then. I still don't understand it, but it just expresses his love and devotion to, to people and that compassion that he had, which is a compassion that Jesus Christ had when he went to the cross. Thank you. Thank you so very <laughs> much. Hari Hari Bol. Uh, everyone, oh, we one, went, go ahead. One other, really quick, I wanted to say, the title of the book, Peace and Love, Peace and Love were, were words that my mother said so often Mother Pearlene, who was mentioned before, blessed by the best. Well, she would say peace and love when she answered her phone. She said peace and love as a greeting, peace and love as a farewell. And it started when she was getting these like crank phone calls. Kids would call <laughs> and make little funny statements on the phone. And then she said that she just decided to answer her phone saying peace and love. And she said she answered her phone like that. And then someone said, come in here what this lady said. And they, she said, someone else came to the phone and said hello. And she said, peace and love. So that's how this peace and love got started. And to our friend, she kind of became the peace and love lady. So I say to each of you, in the name of Jesus, peace and love. Thank you. Thank you. You beat me to the punch. I wanted you to share a little bit about Mother Pearlene and that we all said that at the Namahata. We all said peace and love when we really thought that we were doing a, a big deal. But uh, Marguerite, uh, the uh, the uh, blessed by the best expression. I was told that that was came from uh, your Auntie Rose. Yes, Aunt uh, Rose, yes. That was the one who started the uh, blessed by the best or that was her saying. Yeah, and then grandma, my mother's kind of repeat, may have repeated it many times, but uh, at blessed mm -hmm. by the best, and then grandma was peace and mom was peace and love, yes. Yes, and could you speak a little bit about your mom, please? Just say a couple words about her presence or her personality. Okay, I, I don't, if, if you <clears throat> if you notice at the end of that dedication, I said, we blessed by a mother who brought us up. Mm -hmm. She brought us up, it, it, the peace and the love. There was a lot, a lot of things that we didn't have. And our brother Johnson, you know, we were poor, but we didn't know it. And we didn't, we didn't know it, I think, because of the love that was sheltered over us. And our mother had her ups, she had her downs. Uh, she loved people. She loved people, she loved children. There were so many children that would come to our house. And at one time, and our brothers had so many, you know, so many young men that would come, little boys that, that would come by to visit them. And at one time, you know, there were so many kids coming by that she said, anybody that didn't go to Sunday school couldn't come to our house. And John even mentioned this, like that next Sunday, there were so many kid boys that came to our house that Sunday morning going to Sunday school because they wanted to be able to continue to come. To, that's how people love being around her. And this was even mentioned when she was in the hospital with cancer, as she was transitioning to be with our father in heaven, we had so many friends who had grown up with us, bringing their children and their grandchildren to meet with her. So many people that they, they gave her a different room that was way down at the end of the hall, a larger room, because they said some people really didn't have any visitors coming. And they were seeing so many people coming in and out visiting her. 
So this is the type of woman she was. She was a woman who demonstrated peace and love in bringing up her children. And I'm not saying everything was peaceful because there were times that, we, that things did not go well and we were disciplined, but the peace and the, the love, the love was always there. And I thank God for that and thank God for blessed. And maybe that's why when I had book two, uh, found a new publisher for it, for book two, second edition. Like I said, I had already written up the dedication, dedicating that book to my brother, John, and my sisters and brothers. And then I thought, well, this is the first time that this particular publisher is publishing for the second book, Hope. And so I decided to dedicate that one to my mother and to my aunt. So God has blessed us. And again, blessing me with the, the ministry now, Works of Peace and Love Ministries. That's the ministry that he is working through me. When I was growing up, my mom, in teaching us, uh, she used to write welcome addresses for me to say at church. And then she would go over them. And I never, I didn't realize, and I think a lot of it within our family, some of the, um, I guess, disabilities or certain things, the lack that we had in certain things, we really didn't notice it because of the love we were given. I really didn't know that as my mom was writing things for me and going through particular things for me, that she knew I could not see well enough to read it. And so she helped me to memorize things. And she would be combing my hair, getting me ready for church on Sunday morning. And she would be saying these things, having me repeat after her. And I thank her even now for that, because within the ministry that she has blessed me with, that God has blessed me with, he blessed me with a mother that taught me that I needed to memorize. And now the Lord has helped me to continue to do that. Again, through my mother's teaching, I learned that. And through God's blessings, I continue to be able to teach, to be able to minister by words of peace and love. And the way that the Lord works through me as a vessel to come forth with his words. And that's with my brother, John, he was a vessel a vessel for God. And that vessel is still pouring forth God's peace and love, words of peace and love. And I can see that by this dedication today. Thank you again. God Thank you, you so very much. Uh, <laughs> the name of the books again are Words of Peace and Love. Book one is named Assurance. And book two is named, the subtitle is named Hope. Thank you again, Marguerite, so very much. Uh, for taking the time to grace us with your presence. Hari Hari okay. Bo, Hari Krishna. Uh, yeah, let's, keep, let's keep it going, okay? We have lots of wonderful, you know, people on. Uh, I see Renita, uh, Renita, and uh, is, uh, Renita, since I see you and I'm looking right at you, could you, this is uh, Maharaja's niece, Renita, Renita Allen. Could you um, begin, start your, um, presentation or your glorification for your uncle, please. <laughs> Praise be to God. It's indeed a pleasure to reach out to all of you and to share about uh, Bhakatirata Swami, who's my favorite uncle. Um, my uncle was one growing up who always took an interest in his nieces and nephews, spent a lot of time with each one of us, taught my cousin Normella how to read and told her to take a book to school for a kindergarten class, which was a novel that she started reading, which placed her in advanced placement class. Um, and she's been moving forward ever since. He showed you that he believed in you throughout the time he was at um, Princeton. He sent books back to me related to higher consciousness. Anything he was studying, he wanted me to get an understanding of also. And that helped us to maintain that contact and to grow closer. I remember when grandma was sick once, um, uncle was on a plane coming home. We were all at the hospital because the doctors had told us that if she did not come out of her coma uh, within three days, she would be brain dead. And I was doing my homework and everybody was like, well, how could you work during this time? I said, oh, she's gonna be okay. Well, when uncle arrived off the plane, he told us everything that had happened in her hospital room. So he had basically been with us the whole time, which we were not aware of, um, but that was his using what he had learned and the gift 
so that he could be at his mother's side during that time and then spend time with us. Um, I've had the pleasure of sharing about him many times since his passing with the devotees and with going to activities during his lifetime and getting the chance to meet all of his God brothers and sisters. So it's been always a pleasure, but he was one who was caring, who was always there for you, who would give things to you. He also was a jokester with us, also a disciplinarian. Um, and he also loved to dress. Even as a devotee, <laughs> his outfits from Africa always were very nice. Although they were humble, they were nice. Um, and he always wanted each one of us to go the next step forward. So when we think about him, we think about him with love. And we're sorry that many of us could not be on because most of us are working. And I just happened to be able to do this for a minute through my job. Um, so that's why you're not seeing as many of our family members who would have normally spoken. But when they changed the date, that was a difference for us. But I thank you for this time and I wish you well. And that is a wonderful celebration. It sounds beautiful so far. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Renita Prabhu. Uh, I, I'm sure most of the devotees are familiar with Renita uh, Maharaja's. Uh, uh, I want to mention something right quickly. Uh, Maharaja's uh, biography, uh, Black Lotus. I'm not sure if everyone has it, but that is a wonderful way of, of identifying and connecting with the family because the author, uh, Satyaraj uh, Stephen Rosen, has made it very thorough and full about how we can connect with Guru through, his, through, the, through that book. And uh, thank you again, Renita. I have a picture of uh, Maharaja's father. And I, I don't know if I can show it. I want to show it right now because Renita sent it to me uh, yesterday. Yeah, and, and I went and had it printed. And I'm going to put it up here to the screen. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Uh, it's a picture. Oh, and I wanted to mention uh, your uncle, Uncle Paul, too. Uncle Paul is not with us any longer. And... Um, and this is a picture of Paul, uh, uh, Paul with his father, and John is not with this picture. But can you see it? Can you guys see this picture here? Now we can see it. If you move it back a little bit, a little bit, little bit keep back, back, it? back, back, and up. We can see just one corner. How's that? To, to your right. Move it to your right. This way. And then back a little bit. Stop. Back. Up. <laughs> up a little bit. Got it. That's, that's <laughs> okay. perfect. Perfect. Okay. This is a picture of of Guru's brother Paul and his father. Can we see that? Okay, that's yes. enough. Hari Bo, Hare Krishna. <laughs> I just had to get this picture when uh, when Renita told me that you know it was available and we didn't have time to find other pictures. But thank you so much, Renita, for taking time from your job to be a, to be on board with us. Uh, now we're going to move it right along. And I wanted to see if, if Curtis is on board. Guru's friend Curtis. And I see Ron. Ron, Ron Bay is on. Uh, Curtis, are you available? Hello? Curtis, it's a childhood friend that grew up with Guru. And uh, I'm not seeing him. I thought I might have seen him. What about Greg? Is Greg on? Hi. This is, this is uh, Greg. Uh, he had some wonderful experiences to share because he was, they were children and he was right there with Maharaj uh, as they grew up. And this is uh, uh, a, dear, a very dear friend of Guru's and his name is Gregory Green. And Greg, could you start sharing? You know the, you know the pastime we wanna hear, right? <laughs> uh, about your interaction with Guru when he was involved with his cousin to have the mystical experience of a of a out of body experience with his cousin could you share a little bit about that sure um first but yeah i i'm first of all i am so very humble <laughs> and honored to be a part of this um and it really fills my heart to be able to recall some of the interactions that I've had that I have with Bakatitra uh, as affectionately known as Johnny Boy when we were kids um, and some of the memories about being in his household because his brother Paul 
was our bootleg barber. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he would charge us 35 cents for a haircut, you know, um, when they were a dollar at the barber shop. But uh, anyway, yeah, the experience that ISIS is speaking of is, it was actually an experience uh, of, a, of a, uh, a possession of his cousin, Eddie Pruitt, who was, was possessed by um, some, some force from another universe, as it said. I was 12 years old. Uh, I had just come from school. And, um, and as I was passing his house, I noticed that Dia is what we call uh, Eddie's mom, his, uh, Johnny's cousin's mother, um, was leading Eddie up the stairs of the side of the house going to his bedroom. And I, I later found out that uh, they had just come from the hospital and so I went in, we were all friends, and uh, that's when I began the experience, the experience of uh, witnessing this possession. And uh, Johnny Boy was there. Um, this entity called me Gregory Green Boy, and he called Johnny, Johnny Favor Boy. And, um, and it went on from there. But, you know, I have some really fond memories of, uh, of Dr. Tetra, you know, because we had some really good one-on-ones. We were kids. We, he was a year older than me. And I remember one-on-ones with him. He was very, this, this is a little outside of the realm of but spirituality, but very, but Johnny was a very intense and a very intelligent guy. When we were kids, I remember <laughs> us having these glasses <laughs> and um, Johnny figured out a way where he could get his frames changed free. <laughs> <laughs> and that way was uh, he would put them in the freezer. <laughs> he would put his glasses in the freezer. And then while they were still cold and frozen, he would break them. And that allowed him to get another pair of glasses and a, <laughs> and a different set of frames free. <laughs> <laughs> he was 13 years old, you know, That's 13 true. or 14 years old at that time. So, <laughs> you know, it's some very humorous stuff. But then I, uh, on the other side of that, as he answered his calling and, uh, and we were reacquainted and reunited as adults, um, those one-on-ones and the interactions changed. And uh, he, and, and I recognized his, um, his gift and his spirituality. Um, I would, uh, my cousin Ron and I, we would uh, bodyguard for him uh, when he, on occasion, when he would be in Cleveland at different engagements. So, you know, it, we have a, I had a very rich um, interaction with Johnny and his family. And uh, it, like I said, it's just such a great honor. And I'm humbled to be able to be a part of this. Um, all of my memories of Johnny are very fond and full and uh, he is dearly missed and um, but I know he's 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 enjoying this this celebration right now as we speak so um, with that I'm gonna uh, um, just I'm thanks for allowing me to share uh, those those memories and it gives me great pleasure to be able to do so Jai thank you so much cuz Hey cousin, you know, I, you know, it would have been really cool for you to speak on the, uh, you know, East Technical High School. You know, was the was the school that uh, most of us attended, uh, in in that in that er in that area we call down the way by, and uh, and and down the way it was a like rough neighborhood, you know. So you had to really be tough to go to East Technical High School, right? And so we had, I think Guru even mentioned it himself sometimes. Uh, that some of the uh, attendees that went to the school, you know, you better not mess with, okay? <laughs> and Greg, you were one of those, and Ron <laughs> one of those, you know I mean? We have a couple more people that's on board that'll be able to speak about that. But just by mentioning East Technical High School, I just wanted to say one other thing about 
that school was a technical school, but at the same time, we had some very famous athletes that attended it. And uh, that was Jesse Owens. He was Olympic, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, athlete. Champion. Yeah. Champion, absolutely. And uh, we were renowned for basketball and uh, other, amongst other things. And uh, so I'm just going to keep it moving. And uh, I want to say one more thing, too, about uh, everyone associates Maharaj with the way he dresses. Maharaj was sharp, you know what I mean? And mostly everyone that went to that school, East Tech and friends and family, we all were priding ourselves in how we, our appearance and how we looked. We liked to get sharp, didn't we? <laughs> and um, that was, you know, that's just a brief encounter with East Technical High School and some of the students that attended that. And um, I'll go on and move on. Thank you so much, cousin Greg. And I see Ron's on board. Ron, Ronald Bay, where are you? Are you there? We, you need to unmute, Ron. Can you unmute? <laughs> Greg was one of the young men at a uh, boy at that time when I talked about okay. all the kids that yeah. used to hang around at our house. Right. Getting the haircut. Just Greg was, I believe, was one of them. Ron was um uh -huh. oh. I mean, I can't, I can't think of the names, but when Greg started talking, I thought he was probably. Yes, he, yes, uh-huh. Okay, okay, did I unmute now? Yes, you can, we can hear you. Hey, Ron, hey. what's happening? How you Everything's doing? Everything's good. Everything's very good. Assalamu alaikum. Well, like you, assalamu. <laughs> How's everything? Everything's wonderful. Uh, Ron Phillips Bay is a uh, very dear friend. He's also my ex-husband. I said ex, 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 okay, husband. <laughs> and uh, he's very, very dear to us. Uh, uh, we have some wonderful pastimes with our guru, Maharaj, because uh, Ron and myself and a couple other friends were all together when we first found out and ran into the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. <laughs> so, uh, Ron, could you just share a little bit about your uh, glories and your pastime with uh, with Guru, with, with John? Okay. Uh, first met him at, um, I was running track at uh, Empire Junior High, and my cousin, Denise, uh, Greg's sister, had a crush on the uh, uh, <laughs> one of the guys that was uh, running against me. He was in eighth grade. So, um, um things got together and then um uh, i think uh eventually i met uh johnny boy um after uh, uh probably the weekend after we ran against uh rollins um and so i met him and paul both at the same time um and uh like you said they were very sharp uh dressers um uh, and uh, we all uh, just had had a good time together uh, that weekend, just talking stuff and just hanging out uh, up and down uh, Holton Avenue. Uh, and uh, and just uh, just walking around, talking. Uh, and then we went over Willie Payne's house, uh, and that's where we kind of congregated for a while. And then, Ron, let mm -hmm. me ask you a question. Uh, I remember you said that when you guys were in school, you guys would be in the basement and you would be yes. reading. Uh, what books were those that you and Maharaj would, would be engaging in? Well, it, it was me, him, and this uh, other gentleman named Raymond Otter. Um, and uh, we had, at East Tech at that particular time, they had four different homerooms in the basement. And uh, depending on what grade you were in, uh, that's, uh, uh, so the, the home roof was down there. So uh, for some reason, me, John, and, and Raymond Otter was uh, uh, kind of uh, maybe like the oddballs were maybe like uh, <laughs> what you call wizards. Uh, that's what one girl called me at one time. Uh, because we uh, like different things that was kind of scientific and, and different uh, uh, things not... Uh, uh, not like a lot of the other kids uh, just uh, running around talking mess out the side of your neck. You know, we were talking a little bit of science, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. 
but one time when we all kind of got together, we uh, talked about Khalil Gibran's book, The uh, the Prophet. So maybe this is what uh, eventually started us all on our, our journeys uh, to uh, a higher learning and higher knowledge. Um, and uh, that was my one of my fondest memories of uh, uh, Johnny uh, in the basement at East Tech, besides uh, him going with uh, uh, Carmen Sledge and some of the other uh, other people. And uh, uh, Ron, uh, Ronnie, would you yeah. tell? They'd ask about back about something about about our mother um, and her peace and love. Do you remember the time that she gave, I think it was you, Paul, and someone else a whipping because you all were someplace you weren't supposed to be? <laughs> I, w I wasn't with them. <laughs> you weren't but with I, them? No, but I remember the peace of love. <laughs> I <Okay>. remember. <laughs> well, there was a time, I believe it was, and, 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 and if one of his friends, but this was regarding my mother, and, and a person wouldn't do that these days, or they'd probably be put in jail for child abuse or something. But, um, my mother was going for a walk with our dog, Whitey. And Paul, and I thought it was Ron, but maybe it wasn't. And two other boys, oh, it might have been Ron. It might have been Ron Cooper. Ron Cooper. Ron Cooper. Yes, Ron right. Cooper. Right. Ron Cooper. And, then the, and so they were in, in an alley, and the way they were shooting crap. And they said it was Whitey's fault, because my mom was walking with Whitey. And then Whitey ran down in the alley, because he, he, I guess he smelled them down there. <laughs> Call them down there. She had, she had all of them come back to our house, and my mother was not a very tall woman. She had them get down on their knees so she could reach them, mm -hmm. and she gave, she took out a belt and she gave all of them a whipping, and then she called their parents, and this was something. But, but I, I guess it, it was Ron. It, this, I guess you're the wrong Ron, so you're excused. That's but okay. This, and I, I see. But, but, but I, see. But see, at that particular time, that that's a that's a blessing that we all had at that particular time because anybody, you know, it was it was a village, you know what uh, uh, Bill Clinton's uh, uh, wife talks about. You know, we were raised by a village at that partic particular yes. time. You know, mm -hmm. anybody's parents would yoke you and grab you and 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 get you on this on this straight and narrow path. Yes. Uh, so everybody cared about everybody else at that particular time. So no, uh, you should have brought that uh, point up because <laughs> yeah. because it was it was. I mean, we had a, a lady on 101st Street called Miss Ruth, and mm. uh, she would she would yoke anybody and 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 then and then uh, the the Townsends or the Wilsons or whoever else was, was around, and you were out of pocket and you talked about them. You know, everybody uh, kept everybody in line. And, yes. and 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 we and we we looked out for one another and and you know but no that that's, I'm glad that, I did bring that was one yeah. of the stories that when she was in the hospital and I said friends were coming in and out to visit that's one of the stories that was told at that time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes well you know what I hate to interrupt and stop but I want you to share just a little bit of Ron and. Uh, uh, about our journey when we first met uh, Nanda Maharaj. Or you know what, uh, maybe, uh, I, you know, we, we don't have a whole lot of time. Maybe okay, we well, let me, let, me run, let me run it across it right quick. Okay. okay. Uh, I'd seen, uh, I just got out to service a, a little while ago and, and Krishna Pai was at home uh, uh, going back to Princeton. And we, we, they used to have these big festivals uh, in Cleveland, uh, mm -hmm. uh, downtown. Uh, they were uh, sponsored by the, the government, I think, but but it used to be a big festival. And then uh, I just got out the Marines, and uh, Christian Pod was uh, like I said at home from home uh, uh, okay. at Princeton, and we just and it was such a big crowd that we 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 kind of uh, kind of got turned off by the crowds, so and we wasn't into uh, into all that craziness uh, like we were when we were younger. So we talked about a little bit higher things, and I was saying. It's a place where um, uh, they talk about this higher knowledge, the Moorish American Institute that was on 89th and Cedar. So then I invited him there. He went there the next day and then uh, he started going there and then we started uh, interacting. And then we met a, a gentleman called uh, Norman or Nuruddin, uh, 
but he wasn't, we didn't meet him there. The, 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 the Sunday that he went there and, and raised such havoc with the, uh, uh, the staff there at the Morris American Institute, we were absent and, uh, we met him, uh, probably, uh, <laughs> walking down the street cause he, uh, he lived in a lady's house, uh, uh, named Lorraine and was in the back alley. Uh, Absolutely. The he was uh, walking down the street. I hate to cut you off. I mm. remember seeing him walking down the street with his noonchucks. Okay. Mm. Norman was a little short guy and he, mm. he looked so peculiar. He didn't look like he was from this world, actually, guys. Okay. Uh, he had pointed ears and he was muscular. And I just knew he was from a different planet. I just do it, you know, and especially because I was really into things like that. But when we saw him, I said, that's that guy that was causing all that havoc at the Moorish Institute. And uh, and he lived right down the street. We didn't even know that. We wasn't right. even aware of it. So mm -hmm. go ahead. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I just wanted no, to No, but that. that's all right. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, that's how we uh, uh, first uh, got into, uh, first uh, started talking, to, yeah, introduction to uh, 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 Krishna consciousness uh, through uh, Norman. Norman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Dr. Trindu, when he went back to uh, New York, he uh, uh, studied even a little bit more and more, yes, uh, and then he uh, got with uh, devotees up there, and then he questioned me one time about uh, uh, should he make his uh, steps, and because uh, he was going to leave his his uh, fiance at the particular time, I forgot her name. Eva. Uh, Eva, Eva Coleman. Yeah. Uh, and I said, well, the nice people, you know, and, uh, so I, I guess when I said the nice people, that, that, that uh, that was, uh, his cue to, uh, you know, to, uh, go full in and, and, and become a full devotee. Uh, so, yes. and then every time I needed him, uh, because I was doing other stuff <laughs> all the time when I was grown. <laughs> <laughs> other, other things uh you would always come around when i uh when i was at some of my most lowest parts or lowest uh uh feelings or or or, or when i felt i didn't have anybody else uh around he, he him, always him and his devotees and, and and some of his other people and i said <laughs> johnny boy what's up <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was still saying Christian Bob, but I said, Johnny, boy, come on, come on in, man, you know, and he'd see my little people running in and out of selling stuff, you know, but he, he's a, he wouldn't pay no attention to it, but, you know, but that's how, <clears throat> that's how blessed, you know, he was, and, and he's always been a blessing to anybody and everybody he's been around, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, yeah. We, we, uh, yeah. He was, uh, he was just yeah. unique. He was always yeah, there. Yeah. A he good just person. Appeared. He would always write, you know, when we were, uh, when we had some hell of experiences. I use that expression because they were very, uh, heartfelt and they were, uh, they were, you know, our emotions were, you know, really, uh, Three, zero, sad. Five, and, uh, he five, helped us become, uh, he brought a lot of things to our attention. He, he reminded us of what we were about and where we come from and why we are, should be doing certain things. And he was just unique. Maharaj was just so unique. And, uh, and he was a blessing. It's so many things to say, but I don't have a whole lot of time to say them. So mm -hmm. I want to move on with Burkett Gibson. Okay. Mr. Mr. Gibson, Mr. Gibson uh, went to Hawken uh, Preparatory School with Maharaj. Uh, are you available, sir? Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm ready. Yep. Okay. How are you doing? How are you both? Welcome. How are you? How are you? So happy to have you on board. Thank you so very much for taking the time to... Uh, I, I want... We... I knew as John Haber. Um... I've, I consider myself very fortunate um, in life that um, I got to interact with, with him. Um, John, uh, Mr. Mr. Gibson, how are you both, sir? Uh, you're breaking up just a little bit. Can't hear right, you. Well, Maybe we'll have to okay. adjust the mic a little bit differently. 
Okay, let me try wow, again. That's, that's good. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, okay. that's perfect. Good. Thank you. Um, first of all, I didn't know his nickname was Johnny Boy. And um, <laughs> if, we, if we had known that, my classmates and I, we probably would have razzed him a lot about that. But um, now I know. Uh, he, John Favors, as I knew him, um, was, as you've heard, a student at East Tech High School. Uh, it's on the east side of Cleveland um, on East 55th Street at that time. And um, as you heard, that was the alma mater of Jesse Owens. Um, they had great high school basketball championship teams. Um, so the East Tech High School definitely had a uh, reputation in Cleveland. Well, I should mention, if it, if it looks like in bed on a pillow, uh, your eyes are not deceiving you. Um, I have a physical situation that's um, landed me in bed. So okay. I think my brain so we'll, uh -huh. we'll, we'll go with that. That's no problem. Um, again, at um, East Tech, John uh, did, did very well. Um, on a roll, he might even have been the valedictorian of class. And he had stuck out or was recognized by some people in Cleveland, and they offered uh, John favored a scholarship to Hawken School. Mm -hmm. uh, Hawken was a, uh, let's call it an upper class private school. Um, there were maybe 10 black students there when he, he was there. Uh, so he certainly made a, a mark for himself uh, there. He was uh, never vain. He was very humble. Um, as I guess his um, parents must have taught him um, because he, he didn't brag at all about all the uh, good things he had done at East Tech High School. Um, well, he, he certainly could have done that, but uh, did not. I first had um, meetings with him. We, we had a couple of classes together, but I got to know him best in athletics and um, John joined the football team, um, and I would I also played football, and um, we had a very good total camaraderie in the team with each other, and um, John fit right in. <laughs> the other sport where I knew Johnny Boy was wrestling, mm. and that's that's a completely different skill set than football. Um, in wrestling, you, the athlete, are out there um, combating with one other person, um, and you are all by yourself. There's <laughs> teammates might be cheering from you from the bench, but actually on the mat, um, it was just you. And I don't know, I don't know that he had any experience in wrestling, but he was very fit and very well coordinated. And you know, he, he learned as fast as he could. And, um, you know, we, we would talk to each other while we were doing say a hundred sit-ups for the coach um, <laughs> in, in the wrestling room. Um, he graduated from Hawkins School. He, he, that would have been in the, uh, June of 1968, wow. he had um, applied to Princeton and was accepted. Um, and at that time in the late 60s, he also would have been one of the um, first batch of African-American students on campus. Mm -hmm. um, I had another friend that went there and he would report to me that um, uh, John Favors had been very active in, in some international um, relief organizations. And he eventually became president of the student body, which certainly was um, unusual mm -hmm. at the time. Then I, I lost uh, 
track of him until, uh, I don't know, was it five years ago, Ms. Uh, Debbie Dossi, when you contacted me yes. um, to mm -hmm. speak. Also, the man that wrote the book Black Lotus uh, called me. I, I happened to be the um, mm -hmm. alumni director at Hawkins School at the time, and we had a, maybe a half hour um, interview with each other, and he, he put that in the book Black Lotus. Yes. It's, it's in the front sections of, of the book um, where the author was describing uh, Johnny Boy's life before he um, found Krishna consciousness. Um, and I, I never got to actually speak with him face to face, but I did correspond a little bit um, mm -hmm. in, in letters or emails and um, he would always respond or have one of his devotees respond to me um, and I I just remain to be so uh, impressed all the work he's done or did do I started to say um, in his life mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. first time with Evidasi contacted me there there was a um memorial event for his holiness in cleveland um it, i don't want to say it was a picnic but it, it was held <laughs> in, a, in a beautiful big field and um many, many people spoke there and it was um it was the black lotus Debbie, yes it was the Black Lotus, actually, and okay. uh, we had two occasions, and I'm, I'm thinking that you were at one of those, right? It was the Black I, Lotus, I mean, or you were at the Pappapod's family. I remember asking you, what what should I wear? Um, <laughs> yes. You said it was small, and to me, at the time, formal meant tuxedo, white shirt, <laughs> both tonight, and a uh, evening um, you know, mm -hmm. for my wife, Jai. and um, we we showed up there dressed like that, and I'm sure a lot of people wondered who who are the white people in the formal <laughs> like they, they don't look like they uh, belong here. <laughs> but every, everyone was, you know, incredibly um, kind to us, and I remember so many younger children, ten, twelve years old, and. They were amazed that I had known um, the Swami in his um, former life, if you will, and they <laughs> asked me all kinds of questions about him. And you know, I I could tell that um, the Swami's um, penchant for uh, service and, and love had had already reached down to them at, at a young age, and I imagine they carried that out um, his devotees since then. So I'm again I'm, I'm grateful to have been able to be a part of this celebration today and to say a few words and uh, best wishes to all of you in, in the future. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Oh, so. So God very bless much. you. Peace and love. Jai Heidi <laughs> Bowl. Uh, Mr. Gibson, I think uh, you were hit when you said that shared that Maharaj was a wrestler and played football. Okay. <laughs> you yes. <know? laughs> you know, can you see? Can you see Maharaj? Uh, some of the devotees, when he was in Gita Nagri, would share some of the things that they would do. They would play games. Maharaj would actually participate. So now we know why you guys were always beaten. <laughs> you know, <laughs> racist. You know. <laughs> Right. Well, it, 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 it was not television type wrestling. It was I call it real wrestling. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Heidi Bull, thank you so very much, Mr. Gibson. And I, I and I pray that you're feeling better today. I know when I spoke to you earlier, you said you weren't feeling so well. So we want to make sure that we didn't have anything to do with you not feeling, you know. No. Okay. Just 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 we being don't part of this, uh, this afternoon is really Okay. Up. Thank All you. Right. Okay. God bless you. Thank God you so you. very much. And we'll be in touch. All okay. Right. All right. Thank you. I see. Is Curtis on? 
Avant? I, your your mic is not on, Prabhu. You have to un, you have to unmute yourself. Just a little. I mean, Curtis was one of the boys that was with them when they were disciplined, I believe. <laughs> yeah, he's talked about the back porch or something. <laughs> your your microphone. We need to have your phone. There you go. Can we hear you? We can't hear you. Hold your alt key and tap the letter letter A, and that should turn your audio on. Right. If you're on your computer. I think he's on his phone. Uh oh. No way. You may need to turn up his volume as well. That's all. You may turn up your volume a little bit. We still can't hear you. Which phone is it? I is think it he's on. Xperia? Or Say no. that again, dear. Is it Xperia Z1 Compact or? I'm no. not sure. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I hope we didn't lose them. You know? Curtis, I sure would like to hear what you have to say too. You know? Hardy Bull. Yeah. While, while we're waiting on Curtis, another thing I wanted to speak about regarding John, you were talking about him knowing how to get new frames for his glasses. Right. I remember one year they were giving, they were giving jobs uh, to uh, young men within the Cleveland area who were not in school, who had quit school. Mm -hmm. And it was during the summer and John went down and got a job. He said, well, he said, uh, I'm not in school. He, I mean, he hadn't quit. He, he said, I'm not in school. This is summer. So I've quit going to school. So I can tell them that I've quit school. And it's some, and he was able to get a job for the summer. But he, he, he fixed that. So he wasn't telling a lie. He said, I'm not in school. Right. I've quit because it's summer. But he didn't quit. So. Yeah. Maharaj was very productive when he comes home in the summer from, from uh, Princeton. Yeah, and, this, was, uh, this was when he was in high school, though. This when he, when this, oh, okay. Yeah, he was still in high school yeah. when he got that summer job, yes. Oh, I hope Curtis can get on. Curtis, are you there with us? He might have tuned off. Is this it right here? I'm not sure. Um, okay, we want to keep it moving right along then, okay? Um, yeah, yeah. He, I could see him. His, he just he has to unmute. Okay. Which person is he? Which, which uh, phone? It's an iPhone. It just says iPhone. Just for says his. iPhone? Yeah. I don't Jason see it. Oh, can someone call, give him a call and let him know what he needs to do? Because yeah, maybe he's not that. hearing either. I can do that. Uh, okay, Krishna Shakti Prabhu. It's the last iPhone. That that iPhone hasn't connected to audio. Uh, so they would need to actually connect properly okay. to the audio. Uh, I, I wanted to see. You know, okay, since well. Uh, ask a couple questions and now while we're waiting. Right, okay. Yes, all right. So some of the uh, audience members are very excited. Everyone is intrigued mm -hmm. with the wrestling and <laughs> questions that uh, were brought up. I'll read three of them and then we'll have two more. And if other devotees would like to ask, please put it in the uh, chat. Okay, purple. Mm -hmm. So I uh, would love to know what they thought, uh, what the family and friends thought of Gurudev when he joined ISKCON, especially since many people are from different faiths. Another question was uh, when Bhakti Tirtha Swami was young, what kind of music did he listen to? And what was his biggest inspiration to take on this on uh, the spiritual journey? And another person asked, uh, since Maharaj departed, has anyone seen him in a dream? If yes, what oh. instruction did he give him? Ooh. Right, I'll leave it. On, on that, that first question, when he first joined, I mean, he's our, he was our, our youngest brother. He goes away to Princeton, and then he says he's going to he's sending all of his clothes home because he's making some changes in his life. We didn't know, I guess, what to think. We knew we loved our brother, and we hoped that he wasn't going off the deep end. And we just basically supported him. We because I guess because of love and because of our mom, but at the same time supporting him, I think praying for him that, you know, that he would be okay in this new journey he had started, not having any idea where this journey was leading him. I remember when he was when he was uh, sick and we went up to someplace in Washington, I think where somewhere he, he was staying there, and there was someone from Russia there, and she said something, he told me about Jesus. And so we went from, not knowing and still not completely understanding 
but seeing the growth that took place and seeing how the Lord worked through him. Some language we didn't understand and guess and still don't understand, but knowing his heart. And I think that that's that's what kept us going and kept us supporting because of knowing his heart. And the fact that John, when he was in elementary school, Johnny would go to, they had, this one teacher had Bible study classes and her name was Misty Bowes. I don't know if any of you from, from Kinsman School, mm -hmm. but he was he, Misty Bowes and Misty Bowes had Bible study classes. And one time they couldn't get into the place they were gonna be having the Bible study at. And she talked about, uh, at one of the memorial services for John that we had in Cleveland, she talked about how John went around and climbed up into one of the back windows right. and then came down to open the door so they could get into this building for Bible study. And this was in <laughs> elementary school. So being, being I guess, being in, in, yeah. having ingenuity as to how to make things work, or how to, and you know, the Lord used that personality too to help him to become the man of God that he was right. and the man of God that he still is in our father's house. Mrs. Yes. Burkett, again, there, there was a question about music. Um, he liked Motown, like all of us did um, okay. in the late, late 60s. So Temptations, Four Taps, Supremes, uh, the Vandellas, um, okay. all the great Motown acts. And um, that's what he listened to. Okay. Yeah, and I think he... Uh... This is Ryan. I think he liked a little jazz also. Okay. Uh, Wes and um, and the, uh, the uh, conventional jazz players, but he okay. he liked Motown, yeah. And uh, yeah. And Sledge would listen to uh, would actually listen to classical music, you know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Now that's what is that, that's what my, my mother loved classical music. Yes. In fact, she even talked about taking violin lessons. Yes, right. So I remember that. But another thing about East Technical High School, we all love to dance. You know, we would have recreation at the school and we would pay five cents to go into the recreation uh, area so we can just dance up a storm, you know, and, uh, and we were so, you know, that that was part of our recreation. We love to dance. Mm -hmm. And um, there was another question. What was the other question about? Um, a dream. Oh, the dreams. Okay, you guys. Uh, I since I'm still talking, I dream about Guru Maharaj all of the time. I am blessed mm. with the mercy of him appearing to. Me. Matter of fact, just before I was in so much anxiety about this celebration that I said, I had to make contact with everyone. I mean, I was just really, you know, it was causing me a lot of anxiety and I just decided to just chant. And then I had a dream about Guru and we were at a library and that just soothed me so much. He, um, and out of that dream, I was, I had got the understanding that he wanted us to start promoting his books in libraries. And um, I, I have so many dreams I can share about Maharaj, but I'll take up the whole program if I didn't. <clears throat> So yes, uh, he even promised us that he would be in our dreams. He even shared that with us. So Hari Hari Bo, Hari Krishna. Any other questions? Krishna yeah. Shakti, are you there? Oh Thank you so much. Very exciting. Um, okay, so we have a couple questions that are asking. Um, so they also heard that uh, Maharaj went to church and wanted to hear a little bit more about his personality as he was growing up as a little boy in Cleveland. And then there's another question uh, asking about, uh, saying basically Maharaj was known for his enormous love and care for devotees. And it is just, and he was just God's given gift. Uh, or is it possible for us to also learn how to be empathetic at some level as he was also? Hmm. Read that first question again that you, about so, he was uh, someone asked about uh, how he was, his personality uh, growing up, and a little bit more about his life uh, when he went to church when he was younger. Okay, we went to um, Second New Hope Baptist Church, and uh, as far as going to uh, Sunday school and, and church, that was something that was like a part of, of our upbringing when my mother was concerned. And I spoke earlier about the fact that uh, with, with my brother cutting hair and, and having the two brothers there, Paul and John, there were so many boys that hung around our house. 
And uh, when she said that, that if they didn't go to Sunday school, they couldn't come to our house anymore. And John <laughs> talked about how, how they, 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 they started that Sunday morning, there were so many of them at our house. And John talked about how our mother from time, that if they, did, if they said they didn't have a shirt to wear or something like that, that my mother would take their clothes, John's and Paul's clothes, and let, let these guys wear them. So uh, going to church, going to Sunday school was a part of our upbringing. And uh, so John, he loved, and, and again, being a part of the Bible study group that was in, at elementary school, he would always had, I think, a desire to know more and more about God. And, it, and I talked in my uh, dedication about the stuttering. Really, when Johnny was a little boy, sometimes he would be trying to get a word out and he would go, ah, 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 and he would like stomp his foot or like swing his arm trying to get the words out. So, this, it, but, but within the stuttering, with every, he, it seemed, he didn't let that stop him from wanting to learn, wanting to grow. And it seemed like that, that there were times that, that he, he spoke and there was no stuttering, no stuttering. The Lord, that's why I said that the Lord touched his mouth, mm. worked through his heart to have him be able to share God's word, not only with his family as a little boy and talking about, about Jesus, about God, but he nurtured him so that he could come forth and speak to nations without having to try and get his words out. But he had this very serious stuttering problem. Hi, Heidi Bull. Thank you so much. Uh, I think Curtis, oh, are God. you, are you, are you, thank you, uh, Marguerite Brule. Uh <laughs> Curtis, I see Curtis, I see your face. Uh, we still don't have sound, do we? Can you hear me, Curtis? Nope, we still can't hear him. I can see. We can see you, but we still can't hear you. There's a button you have to unmute yourself. You have to unmute. Does anyone have his number so they can give him a call? I have to give him a call. I'll do that now. And and yes, and and, and tell him what he needs to do. Renita, are you still on? Okay, you know, tomorrow, Renita, no, I think Renita, she was at work and she couldn't. Oh, okay, she was still on five trying. minutes. Yeah, how do you go? Curtis? No. Uh, if, uh, if, uh, okay, we have some, uh, we want to keep it going. We want to keep it smooth. Uh, Curtis, you may have to speak tomorrow if we can't. I'm going to call you. I'm going to ask someone else to speak now. Uh, I want to see who else is on. Um, uh, let's see here. There's one question about a. Uh, okay. Uh, Fiance, and if anybody knows the whereabouts of how she's doing or where she is, <laughs> no, she, uh, she visited the hospital when my when uh, mm -hmm. my mother was in the hospital, mm -hmm. and uh, like I said, and and John even mentioned he said, have you noticed that we have so many ex husbands, ex wives, ex girlfriends, and boyfriends that are visiting her <laughs> that that still loved her mom, but she said that she didn't lose John to another woman, she lost John to God. <laughs> Hari Bo, Hari Krishna. That's yeah. just like Ava, too. And, and if, if Bernie was on the phone, then she would give you, because Bernadette knew her better than I did. Big difference in our age. Jai, Hari Bo. Yeah. Uh, uh, Eva Coleman was 10 years older than Guru, you know? I did, was she? I didn't know yes, that. Yes, uh, she was 10 years older than Guru. And um, uh, she was a, I remember her being a tall, elegant woman. And um, um, let's see here. Uh, it's something else I wanted. To, she was into yoga. She was a yoga instructor, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, um, Maharaj always. We tried to locate her. We, you know, we were we were in search of her. We we no one. She sort of just disappeared. You know, we don't. Mm -hmm. We couldn't find her. We were trying to locate her, and you know, but uh, everyone was. Everyone in. Uh, I guess I, I think John, when I think I'm trying to locate her, I think about Mother John Babadi because she was Guru's secretary at the time when we were trying to actually find out where her where she was or mm -hmm. what happened to her. But we were not successful at all. Till today I have not been able to find out anything about her. Mm -hmm. She seemed to have just disappeared. <clears throat> so um let's see here. Um Krishna Shakti. Yes. Uh, there, are there any more questions that you know? 
One just popped into the chat. Uh, those disciples who have not seen him in uh, in dreams, does it mean that they are not bona fide disciples, or does it mean? <laughs> It does not mean that, no. <laughs> it definitely doesn't mean that. <laughs> well, that's yes. <laughs> or not serving nicely that blocks them from dreaming of him. No. Nope. I don't think so. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think so either. I know that's not so. Yes. Right. You know, a guru and, was not that type of guy. You know what I mean? No, he was a people person. No. That was for sure. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's there's one other um, there's one other person I think that's um, that's I'm just trying to go through and, and see their names again because uh, uh, I want to hear from the devotees you know some of the devotees that are on um, um, uh, Mother Kamagiri she's having uh, difficulties uh, technical di difficulties so she just I wanted just to offer like you know, Krishna Dean, uh, mm -hmm. Krishna Dean is no longer with us. Right. But Krishna Dean it. was a devotee who was very, very close to our family mm -hmm. and very, very close to our brother. I mean, she was there for him. There. And so I would just like to just, just give honor to her for the person that she was as a devotee and as a friend to our brother, Krishna Dean in Cleveland, Ohio. Thank right. you, Mother. Thank yeah. you so much, Marguerite. Krishna Dini, Devi Dasi, Ki Jai, Hari Bo. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we would be so excited when we would go to visit Mother Pearlene. And, you know, uh -huh. we would all, you know, it was a big, it was a big deal. You know, we would uh, yes. look forward to her, you know, and uh, uh, we would all jump into a car. We would all be together and we would go visit Mother Pearlene. And, we bring her prasadam, you know. We have yeah. wonderful, fair memories about Mother Krishna Nini. She always maintained contact. She was the yes, connector to with so many people, with so many uh, uh, gurus, family members. And um, yeah. yes, thank you for mentioning uh, Mother Krishna Nini. And Burkett, yes. Mr. Gibson, that's who yes. you were speaking about. You were when you were saying Devi Dasi, you were speaking about Mother Krishna Nandini. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> right, Hari Thank you. Okay, um, I've just not, I, I, I have some requests. I would really like to hear from Curtis. I mean, we would love to hear from you, Curtis, but- Yes, Curtis I mean, would have so much to could say. Could someone else say something and I'll try to call him right now, please. You know, Krishna Shakti Prabhu. Yes, are there other questions? Okay. I would like to hear some of your, your, your favorite pastimes that are that were taking place with them. I know we've heard several different um, pastimes from metaphysical to playing sports to church. What are some other stories that um, we may not have heard that you all would like to share? Hmm. Hi, Bo. This is Agni Hotra. How's everyone doing? Hi, Hi. Agni Prabhu. Hi, Krishna. Hmm. Hi, well, I don't have much to say because I'll be talking too long. But however, I, and I know we all can say the same thing. I knew Guru loved me. You know, I was a special child. You know, which we all said that. But however, I had gotten sick before. And my guru came to my bedside and he rubbed me on my side of my face like, and told me, oh, you gonna be all right. Ain't nothing gonna be wrong. You, I'll take care of you, you're gonna be just fine. And one didn't take too much time and I was feeling a lot better. <laughs> Then I had another sign where girl, I wasn't gonna tell this one because my god sister is in there and she's like way my senior, Mother Vajalila. She had this little story. Well, they always here, which I love that. They always here and I wasn't feeling good and Guru was here and I was, I was laying down on the floor with my face facing the TV. And she told on me, Roger, this is a dream now, okay? Don't be getting on me. 
So anyway, she told on me and she said, Guru Maharaj, she's, she's laying down on the floor, supposed to be sick, but she watching TV. I, I, I didn't know what Guru was going to say, but he, he stood, stood in my corner. He said, that's what she do, though, isn't it? You know, so he just busted me in two things, you know what I mean? I know what you do. That's what mm -hmm. she do, isn't it? Uh, so many times I got busted by him. Seriously. And I don't know, for those who don't know how Guru can bust you, he can bust you. Make your feelings hurt and everything. He can, he can do it. I was uh, kind of wasn't caught by him, but he's so smart, he know anyway. My husband went to take him to Detroit. Good. I was home alone. But when he came back, and, and, and Guru came back, because it was a short trip. I'm here in Cleveland. And so when they came back, I said, I, I, had, I, know, I knew his schedule. So he went and uh, he said, I can help you. I said, yeah, what you want me to do, make you some popcorn now? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I'm trying to apologize for everything I done done. He said, yeah, how did you know? I ever do that. Yeah. I said, yeah, I want to do everything that you did. I said, you want to make popcorn? I beg your pardon. Translation. We have a Russian translation, and I just switched translators a little oh, bit came into okay, the English. We do have <laughs> in the background. We have a Russian. There's a Russian going on. So don't be I don't know what he was saying. <laughs> but I don't know. Anyway. Thank you to the Russians for the translation. <laughs> I um, thank you, Russia. So therefore, what I I did was I kind of felt he 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 just <laughs> was mad at me. Oh Lord, I didn't get my pieces in then fast. Well, anyway, they was in the back. They was in the bathroom. So when he came back that morning, no, they came that night. But when he came back, he said, uh, "Did your husband tell you what I said?" I said, "No," which he hadn't told me in in Guru's way. No, he hadn't told me in his way, but he told me in Guru's way. Uh, what's this I hear about you smoking? I got busted smoking because he got in my car and went to Detroit. They didn't go in his car. So, therefore, when Guru got in my car, he smelled that smoke. I, I, I love the video. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when he smelled that smoke, he knew, uh, he knew the way that I was smoking. Somebody in English tell me when they trying to talk at the same time because I don't know. And so, therefore, when he took him to the Detroit, y'all, my walls was going around. I had vertical. Guru gave me vertical. And it was just going around and around. That means I was home by myself all that time. And I did not know what was going on. But I stayed, I stayed sick a couple of days then. But he, he did catch me. And he told me, he sit down and and uh, um, talked to me for a while. And then he uh, told me, he said, because if you going to keep smoking here, I'm not coming back. And when he had a meeting with me, he had a meeting with me. And my husband was sitting in there. And he was getting ready to leave. My husband was going to leave and let us do our talk. Guru said, no, I'm not disrespecting you. know, sit down. So he, he said, listen, I can't, I can't come back here no more if you don't stop. And my husband, like I said, he said he wasn't coming back no more, too. I just rolled my eyes in there. <laughs> but I quit, OK? <laughs> I quit because I know who can see me. Okay. <laughs> so I just I just quit. I left it alone. 
I thought about it, Secret, but I know Google can see see me, and I wasn't gonna try to pull that one out. Mm-hmm. Wasn't gonna try to pull it out. But I've been trying to be humble ever since. <laughs> That's my little downfall. But I've been trying to trying to follow all the rules and all the stuff like that. So I have been doing that. And I, hi, go ahead. Agni What'd Prabhu, you, uh, you know, I just wanted to share with everyone your wonderful, dev- wonderful devotional savor of uniting proper parts family and uh, the Black Lotus Affair. I wanted you to, you know, I wanted to say that you were the one that spearheaded that program. Uh, it was a fabulous, wonderful, unique way. And uh, thank you so very much. I'm gonna have to let your husband speak now. <laughs> he asked to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Is he there? <laughs> yeah, he was. Have a dude there. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Please accept my humble obeisances. Please accept our All those Guru Dave, Srila Prabhupada, all the Vaishnava devotees. Uh, what happened? <laughs> uh, I'm going to give me back my voice is still there, but I don't see myself. Oh. Well, I do have one fast time about Guru Dave I'd like to share with the devotee. Once when uh, Guru Dave came to Cleveland, he had me to uh, drive him and some of the uh, devotees around. And the first place that we went to was Hawkins. So we went to Hawkins and uh, viewed around the place and he was showing the uh, the devotee went where Hawking was and where he went to school at at that time. Then we left Hawking, we was going down in what we call the hood, now this <laughs> neighborhood. So while we was making that track from Hawking down to his area, he was telling he was telling the story how he used to run track and in, in uh, at Hawkins. And he said he was running track, he was running leg, and and uh and the devotee was rooting for him. Come on, John. Come on, John. Ron, go, John. Go, John. Everybody, everybody was just rooting. Go, John. Go, John. And he said he came in second place. And then when he said when he came in second place, some of his wife, some some of his wife friends said, uh, John. I thought you white. I, I, I thought you black folks around. <laughs> so he was telling that little old past time had everybody, uh, everybody cracking up. And then when we get down to the neighborhood where he lived at, he was going to, he was going to show everybody uh, the house that he grew up in. Uh, so we was just riding. And he was just talking about the neighborhood. Then when he got into the area where the house is there, he looked over and he said, yeah, I used to live right there in that, in, in that house. He pointed, he said, he finished that living in that house right there, but the house was torn down. Yes. <laughs> and he was got so excited, he said, oh, 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 why? I don't believe this. Yes. The house is not I... there anymore. The house is not there. <laughs> everybody, just, everybody just cracked up, you know. I think so we all get the same feeling about that, uh, that house. Yes. That I could share that really, really uh, had us all cracking up, and we really enjoyed it. Especially the trip down to Hawkins and back down to the neighborhood, and uh, and the and the uh, devotees that were with us, they really uh, enjoyed it. Okay. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that fast time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Especially How you the doing? part about the house. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hari Bo, Hari Krishna. Uh, since I see a lot of other devotee uh, disciples of Bhakti Tirtha Swami on, um, I'm going to ask you to speak. I see Mukunda; he's there too. And uh, I'm a, and who else? Who said some? Someone said I'm a. I'm a, going to leave. This is Ryan. Okay, yeah, Ryan. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Peace. All right, peace. Thank you so very peace much. And love. Thank this you. Be in touch. And I had a one wonderful time. Thank, Thank you, Prabhu. Hari Bo. Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna. Okay. Ronald Phillips Bay, Jai. 
<laughs> were you able to get Chris? Were you able to I, get I, Curtis? I, I can't get Curtis. I don't know where he's at. I okay. just got, we, no, I, uh, I guess, well, here he is here. Here he is again. Okay. You know, when I was trying to call, I, my, my phone was ringing again. So let me just, uh, cause, um, Makunda, I see you right there. Could you just mm -hmm. go ahead? You know, could you, could you, this is Makunda. He's a very oh. good friend of Bhakti Tirtha Swami. Um, when I first became involved again with the uh, Krishna consciousness, I met Makunda and Raja Leela. That was my first encounter with, uh, with coming back into the, to the swing of things. I'll, I'll put it that way. And um, I remember Maharaj saying something of, that was very unique for me and it touched my heart about Makunda. And that was that he says, he is responsible for so many devotees in the uh, in our in our movement, and I think that that was very that was bit, that humbled me because um, I said, "Well, who is this guy?" You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I was saying, "Who is this?" You know, and at that time, at that particular time, his name was Ekendra. So, uh, welcome Ekendra to this wonderful platform of honoring and glorifying Bhakti Tirtha Swami Hari Hari Bol, Sri La Krishna Pad. <laughs> Jai, so I will not be very long. I have a, another class also to do. And also I know there's so many devotees yes. and disciples and well wishes who would like to glorify Maharaj. So Vancha Kalpa Turubhya Kripa Shinda Vevacha Patitanam Pavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha. So just briefly, I, I remember I started going to the Henry Street Temple in Brooklyn in uh, 1972. And I know that Maharaj was coming around that time, but somehow I, I, I never met him then or had the opportunity to have his darshan or see him. But I remember um, you know, when I came out, I went to the Air Force and when I came out of the Air Force, I was going to college in Brooklyn. And um, I remember I decided that I was gonna join the movement full time. So I moved all the way from New York to Los Angeles to California to join to New Dwarka. And I remember, you know, doing many, you know, sort of regular services around the temple. But one day they had me work at the BBT, which is the book publishing arm of the uh, ISKCON movement. So I was there and I think I was just moving some boxes or doing something. And all of a sudden there was a kind of buzz, you know, among the devotees, you know, oh, so, so, so. And that's all I heard. Next thing I, I know, I see uh, Maharaj come in. Of course, he wasn't Maharaj at that time. His name was Ganesham at that time, but he came in. And what shocked me, obviously, was that, you know, here was, you know, my first introduction to, there are many, you know, African-American devotees uh, in the movement at that time, obviously, but the kind of status and the kind of energy that they accorded him when he came in to the BBT oh. was like I had never seen before. So mm. when they all awesome. left, uh, when Maharaj, uh, excuse me, when Ganesha Prabhu left, then I asked, well, who, who is this? So I said, oh, this is Ganesha. And he began to talk about the BBT library party and his preaching and, and how he had distributed so many books in so many places. So then I remember trying to purposely find a way to get back to the temple because I thought he may be giving class. And of course I got back and he was not there. So fast forward to, 1979, I had actually decided I was going to go back to school. So I did not stay at the temple out in California. And uh, when I got back to New York, I began a music career and that was, you know, happening. So I started playing music, but I would go, you know, pretty much daily to the new Hare Krishna temple, which was on 55th street at that time in New York. And I would always take my lunch and even my dinner there. So, um, once I was taking the dinner and one devotee came downstairs and he said, um, Brahmananda and Srila Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj would like to see you because he had just taken sannyas. This was in 1979. So I remember going up to the room and when I came in, you know, I knew the etiquette. So I paid my obeisances to both of them. Brahmananda just had a big smile on his face. Like we got one. And <laughs> Srila Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj was more coy. He was like, Hi, how are you? And he, he began speaking like, you know, oh, it's very nice to meet you. And, uh, you know, you seem like a very nice gentleman. And so he was speaking like this. And I was like, you know, humble because here were two sannyasis and I had great, you know, respect. And then Maharaj asked me, he said, listen, 
we're trying to do some programs in the communities. And I heard that you were a musician and so forth. So would you like to help arrange some programs and perhaps give a donation? So I said, well, you know, certainly. And I gave a donation. I remember arranging a couple of programs um, in Harlem. One was at the Tree of Life bookstore, which is a very famous bookstore in Harlem. And then another program at a place called the um, National Black Theater, which was a very famous enclave for artists and so forth. Uh, and then after that, I remember thinking, you know, I, I definitely, you know, had an urge that I want to just join again full time. I actually want to go back, live in the ashram. I was out of school. I had a fairly successful music career. I was, I was good. Um, so I remember thinking, yeah, I'll do this. Of course, I was, you know, um, I was with someone at that time. And we went all the way back to California, as crazy as that sounds, so that I wouldn't have any distractions. And I remember getting to California and thinking, you know, I'm not really comfortable here now. You know, Srila Prabhupada has, has gone and so forth. So I remember calling uh, Maharaj at his newly found preaching center in DC, which was the restaurant. And Maharaj told us, he said, listen, don't do anything drastic, but catch the next bus you can and come back here to the restaurant. <laughs> so we came all the way back across country and we came to the restaurant. And of course, um, you know, we were finally part of Maharaj's program and this felt like home. This felt like, you know, this is the place we should be. There were many other sweet devotees there. Maharaj was giving class every morning. Uh, you know, it was a very simple program, but we were doing everything, mm -hmm. Nam, all these things. So I'm not going to speak long, so I'll try to speed everything up. So I remember one morning Maharaj came down to give class. And Maharaj, he would always sit with his back against, there's a famous picture, he's sitting in the restaurant up on a little dais and there's a wooden, you know, wall behind him. So he started to begin the class. Jaya Radha Madha. Oh, by the way, um, uh, pretty soon, uh, Ikindra and uh, Papa Staya, I want you to go to Africa. Okay, Jaya Radha <laughs> And he didn't say anything else. He didn't give any details. <laughs> You know, and he just, you know, went on. So, you know, after the class, I was quite shocked. So then he told us, listen, you know, you and Papa Staya, you can go to the festival in India. So immediately I was psyched about that. And then I want you to go to Africa. At that time in Africa, there were no temples. There were no, nothing was there really except Brahmananda Swami who was preaching there. And so, um, of course, you know, it's with Rajalila at that time and there was no arrangement for, for any uh, ladies or anything like that at the time. So I went to Africa in 1979 and uh, Maharaj had told me prior, this is an important thing. He had mentioned to us one day that he had a dream and in his dream, Srila Prabhupada had actually come to him and Srila Prabhupada told him to open the door. Uh, Rajalila can correct me if, if I'm wrong about the story. I'm trying to do it from memory. He said uh, oh, that Srila Prabhupada told him to open the door. So he said, Srila Prabhupada said three times. And on the last time he said it, he was very emphatic. So then he said that Srila Prabhupada, in the dream, he got up and he opened the door and all of these devotees started coming in. African devotees started coming in. And Prabhupada smiled at him and said, see, I told you. <laughs> so, you know, you know, Maharaj, of course, got us a ticket. He got me a one-way ticket and he gave me 10 US dollars. <laughs> so that's how I went to Nigeria in 1979. And uh, of course, you know, there's inspiration, uh, you know, long story short, we were able to do preaching there. Some months later, not only Vrajalila, but uh, other devotees came there. Uh, we were able to convert a clinic at that time uh, in one section of Lagos called Ilupeju, we converted a clinic uh, into a temple and, uh, I actually did a whole narration, maybe 10 hours worth of videos because I didn't want to lose these memories. And I posted them on Facebook. They're somewhere on my Facebook page. But uh, we converted that and that was the first temple there in Lagos. And of course, under his inspiration, there were so many temples and so forth that developed from there. So I'll just tell a few pastimes of Maharaj because I know devotees are always anxious to hear them. So of course, one of them is that anytime we would travel to Africa, uh, it was mandatory for us to get shots at that time. Uh, but Maharaj sometimes would be traveling and he would not, you know, maybe come back to America and he'd be coming straight to Africa and he wouldn't get the shot. So he did that once and he got to Ghana 
By this time we had opened the temple in Ghana and Maharaj got to Ghana and he had not gotten his shot yet. So he said, well, I'll just get one while I'm here. So one day we all got together, we got in a van and we went to one local clinic there and Maharaj, you know, I don't, you know, I'm sure, you know, like those who are close to Mecca Prabhu, Rajalila, Jambavati, they must know Maharaj does not do needles well. <laughs> so we went to the clinic and Maharaj sat down and Maharaj was making small talk with the doctor to try to, you know, just, you know, make the atmosphere kind of light. So he said, oh, well, where did you study? Did you, you studied in America? And the doctor started preparing everything. He said, nope, didn't study in America. So then Maharaj looked at me, then he asked again, he said, oh, well, you, you must have studied in the UK. So then, you know, the doctor didn't answer him and the doctor kept, you know, putting the needle together and everything. And so Maharaj at this time, he could see he's getting anxious because whenever Maharaj would get anxious, he would start speaking faster. So then he finally said, well, I mean, where, where'd you study? You study here at University of Ghana? So then the doctor, he took the, the needle, the syringe part, and, you know, he squirted a little bit of the liquid out and he said, no, my friends just told me I'd really be good at this in the village. So I started doing this <laughs> and Maharaj's face, it dropped and he's just like, he became really serious and everything. And then the doctor said, no, 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 I went to university and everything. And so then Maharaj, he gave Maharaj the shot. So another, another time Maharaj, which was a little, this is a little heart touching. Maharaj came to Ghana. We had finally opened the temple and uh, we had gotten a fairly large building in one section of Ghana called uh, Odoko. And so this was a very huge temple and there were many programs. We had started to make many devotees by that time. But unfortunately, uh, once there was a coup in the country, it means there was a political turnover. And so because of that, there was an inability for trucks and things to bring produce into the main city of Accra. So for about three months or so, we were primarily just buying for the devotees, bananas, groundnuts, and oranges. So uh, we told Maharaj, he was coming to Ghana and I actually remember writing him and telling him Maharaj, don't come now because you know, everything is happening and we can't really serve uh, the way we would like to. And I remember when we first met Maharaj, he, he never would take cooked food. Uh, he would only eat like cut, you know, fresh fruit and vegetables. And the only thing he would eat cooked is a little bit of popcorn. But, you know, after he, you know, had taken sannyas and devotees wanted to serve him more, he began to take cooked food. So when we were in Ghana at first, it was amazing because we could get everything. We had some of the most opulent feasts. We had a beautiful temple. But at this particular time, things were lean because we were unable to get things. So I wrote Maharaj and told him particularly not to come at that time. So every night we used to do Harinam and when we do Harinam, we would leave the temple building and we would circle down to the bottom of, to the main street and come back up and all the shops and everything would close down and follow us with torches. So you'd have like 150, 200 people following the Harinam party. And then we would come back to the temple we'd stand on the entranceway to the temple and we would do the Nishringa prayers because all the people liked it so much. So everybody was chanting, Jaya Narasimha Dev, Jaya Narasimha Dev. And so finally we stopped and we were chanting, Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada. Then all of a sudden we got ready to do the Jaya Dwani, Jaya Om Vishnupada, et cetera. And a car pulls up and out of the car, Bhakti Tirtamara steps out and he starts dancing and the whole thing starts up again. Jaya Prabhupada and the Kirtan and everything. And we're dancing there, right? So everything is ecstatic because he's gotten there. But the issue is now in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, but I told Maharaj not to come because we don't have anything. So Maharaj came and he said, no, no, no. I promised I was gonna come at this time. So he came. So the next day myself and one other devotee named Ma Mantra, he's a sannyasi now, his name is uh, Bhakti Ranta Shanta Maharaj. But uh, we, we went and there was one place we used to get fresh, fresh baked bread. So we thought at least if we can get this bread and we can get a few other things together, we can offer something really, really nice. So we went and we got two loaves because it was being rationed and we brought it back and remember slicing everything up and making like a toast. And we had a few other things. We brought the plate out to offer to Maharaj. 
And so Maharaj, he, you know, told all the devotees, are they taking prasad? So he said, yes, Maharaj. So then when we gave him the plate with the bread on it, he says, oh, this is really nice. You were able to get some, some bread and everything. I mean, devotees will be really happy. So then I told Maharaj, I said, uh, Maharaj, unfortunately, you know, because of the rationing, we could only get two loaves of bread. So we're kind of saving this for you for the you know period of time while you're here. We, we don't have enough to really give to every single devotee. So Maharaj took the bread off of his plate and he put it on the plate of two devotees who were sitting next to him and he says, you know, I don't really eat bread that much anyway. You know that, right? And so, you know, we all kind of broke down crying and everything. And uh, it was like, you know, this was like his nature. So uh, I have so many of these pastimes that I recorded. I, you know, there's just so many of them and I don't want to take so much time because I know there's so many devotees here. Thank you. But the last thing I'll say is that um, the Leela that the Guru performs is the disciples only connection with unconditional love. There has been no time prior to meeting Guru that we've actually experienced unconditional love. Because we're conditioned souls, our parents are conditioned souls, our friends are conditioned souls, uh, our former boyfriends, girlfriends, they're all conditioned souls. So Guru is the first time we get to see unconditional love. Mm. So the pastimes that the Guru performs within this life are any disciples uh, constant day-to-day, minute-to-minute inspiration. And at the time the Guru enters Samadhi, at that time, then Guru Dave, he allows a disciple to feel for the first time, what is the spiritual mood of separation? Separation will not come for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or for Radha Krishna, as long as we're still in our conditioned stage. But the first separation any disciple will feel is from Sri Guru. And it is that separation from Sri Guru that becomes the fuel for their practice in bhajan life. Their harinam, their harikata, they're serving their deities. Everything will be fueled by that separation which comes when Gurudev enters Samadhi. It is the first time any disciple will cry a real tear. Mm-hmm. The first Hare time. Hare Krishna. So all the disciples should meditate that Gurudev in his Acharya Leela in his pastimes, he showed so many times affection. Sometimes he gave chastisements. Sometimes he did very funny things. Both me and Maharaj, we don't do mice very well. And we were dancing <laughs> in Zambia once in a kirtan and a mouse ran into the temple at that time. And the devotees were really ecstatic. You know, the kirtan was nice. Me and Maharaj jumped in the same chair simultaneously <laughs> and we hooked arms, right? And the devotees thought it was coordinated. They just thought it was part of the kirtan. So all the devotees were cheering, right? And me and Maharaj, we jumped in the chair because we don't do mice well, right? <laughs> so all these kind of sweet memories and things like that, including the chastisements and the times when Maharaj will become heavy, any devotee should cherish all these things that this was the love and affection for the first time I've experienced from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Radha Krishna through the agency of Sri Guru. My own Guru Maharaj into Samadhi in 2010. And every day that I travel for preaching or do Harikata or anything, uh, when I'm saying the Jayadwani, some tears will come to my eyes. And I know that is the influence of the potency of Guru Dev and their Acharya leader. So you're all mm-hmm. so fortunate that Maharaj, I know many of you, and I know how much affection Maharaj showed to so many of you. I remember when many of you first came. And the first time you went upstairs and Marad smiled at you and then we would know, we would be downstairs and we know, okay, we got one, right? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you went upstairs and go into his room and he smiles at you, everybody would come downstairs with these expressions on their face and we'd know, okay, <laughs> got, we got another person. <laughs> so anyways, Jai all glories to the Lotus Vita Srila Bhakti Tiyata Goswami Maharaj Key. and all glories to his devotees as well. Jai. 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 Hare Krishna. Thank Jai. you so much. I need to much leave now me. because I have an appointment. Okay, but, Mark. But thanks to all of you and ISIS. Thank you for being so diligent in contacting family members. God bless each of you and continue to receive God's peace and love in Jesus' name. God bless. I'll talk with you later. Bye bye.
Well, thank you so very much for being here. Also, Isho Upanishad. Also, I'm going to stay on for, for a little while more, but then I have to go because, you know, I have class coming yes. up soon. Mm -hmm. in this day. Jai Prabhu. <clears throat> Hari Hari Bo. Hari Krishna. Thank you so much, uh, Marguerite. Uh, we must do this again. This is not the only time that we will be sharing about uh, Maharaj. But uh, I want to see if uh, Curtis can get back on again. Hari Bo Prabhu, are you there? Where are you? You were just on. I just called you, and um, and you were, you were. There you go. Where are you? Where are you? Where? Are you? Hi, both. Hi, both. Curtis, Prabhu, can you can you hear me? Hi, Krishna. Hi, Bo. I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> Hi, Krishna. Curtis. Are you there? Are you there? <laughs> there you are. Can you can we can we hear you, Prabhu? Can you say something? I hear something. Nope. Say hi. Can you hear me, Curtis? Hi, Bo. I guess uh, he's trying to find the, he sees the microphone and when he hits the microphone button, he says that it has a line over it. And when he hits it, it doesn't do anything. So maybe he's having some technical difficulties with the sound. Okay. Um, I, I guess we got to keep it moving. Hare Krishna, Krishna Shakti Prabhu. Yes, yes, I, yes. I just wanted to, is there any more questions? Yes, or anything about um, hearing about Maharaj's experience in a uh, university and at Princeton. And also, uh, we want to just thank um, Makunda Prabhu for sharing those. And uh, on behalf of Sahadev and also many of the African devotees, want to thank Mother Brajalila and um, Makunda Prabhu for opening up the way and sharing the Krishna conscious movement within Africa. And Hi. We all appreciate all your sacrifices that you both have done and on behalf of Maharaj. So thank you so much. Jai Prabhu. Definitely. I'm not sure we can get into the uh, pastimes at university. Is that possible? Uh, you mean at, at Princeton? Yes. Mm -hmm. Some of the uh, past three days. Okay. Um, so uh, should, should we, uh, there are some other Cleveland disciples on, should we just invite them to, to be able to speak yes. or to say yes. something? Yes, we have seven more minutes, so. Oh, seven minutes, okay. All righty, okay. Um, Haribo, where are, the, where are the devotees of the Cleveland Yatra? I see um, Mother um, Haribo, uh, there's Mother uh, Warkalila. Are you there, still there? Or did you just hide? <laughs> Hare Krishna, Haribo. I don't see Dwarka Leela, um, you know, I don't see her. Hare Krishna, I am here. <laughs> oh, please accept my obeisances, everybody. Um, okay. Hare Krishna, I, I'm going to interrupt you for one second. We only yes. have seven minutes. I know. Okay, Jai Prabhu. Okay, I... Um, I'm so grateful to be a part of this. I'm so grateful to hear. I'm so, I'm so grateful for the family um, that Guru Dave invited us in. I'm so grateful to be a part of all of this. I um, Hare yes. Krishna. I'm going to have to have you pause for one minute. Because that's that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Curtis's yes. mic is back on now, so we're going to go back to Curtis. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so very much, Curtis Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hari Bol. I can't hear you. Curtis Avant. We are here. Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna. Curtis, is you all right? Yeah, he's all right, Mata. He's okay. We're, we're just waiting for him to get his mic. He has to understand his mic, you know. Um, let's see here. 
If okay. he calls me, he can call me, and then I can at least have his sound. Okay. Uh, let me just. Uh, can you call? Can I give you his number? Maybe I'll just give you his number. Okay. Okay. So uh, in the meanwhile, just the show mic the mic. Is at, uh -huh. The mic is at the bottom of the iPhone. Yes. He has to press it. He's been unmuted, but for some reason, the sound is still not coming through. He's not being able to get through. Yes, you know, because um, hmm. I just called him and I just tried to share that with him too, but he's not able to connect. Okay. Okay. All righty. Let's go here. Let's see here. Okay. You know, let me just, Krishna Shakti, I'm going to send you his number. Okay, Prabhu. And while we are in waiting for the phone number, mm -hmm. uh, Mother Yashoda Mai has a beautifully uh, Picture. A beautiful photo yes. of Guru Dave dressed from prom and, <laughs> and oh, just oh. talking about how sharp Guru Dave was. <laughs> <laughs> like yes. So please, Mother Yashoda, show us real quick if you're able. There we go. Okay. Can you back it up just a little bit? Back it up a little bit more. Okay, maybe actually come closer and then down. <laughs> Two, one, six, eight, nine, four. <laughs> wow. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Now, I bet you guys don't know who that is that he went to the prom with, do you? No, no you don't. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm thinking that that is Oladesia. I'm thinking that, that that's who that is uh, at the prom, but I'm not sure what prom that was either because Maharaj is very popular. So um, yes, I just sent the number of uh, Krishna Shakti Prabhu. I think I did anyway, let's see what happens. Did you get it? Haribo. Maybe Dwarka Leela can go quickly. Yeah, Dwarka Leela Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mother. Jai Prabhu. Thank you, Yashoda. <laughs> Mai. You can Hare Bo, you can begin. Thank you. Hi Bo, please. Oh <laughs> thank you for the opportunity. Um, I don't know how I can possibly um, share my gratitude for Guru Dave, but I could um, I could read something if that would be okay. Sure. Um, sometimes I have anxiety um, just speaking. I'm very much enjoying this. This is a blessing. Um, okay, I, I, I will. I will do that. I will just read. <laughs> um, I write to Guru Dave every day, and um, I'm so thankful for you, um, Mother Isopanishad and Mother Krishna Nandini, because all of this um, gateway was opened for me uh, because of you. <laughs> so, okay, let me just quickly try to do this. I know we have a moment, um, only a few minutes. My dear Gurudev, how can I possibly say that I can read a writing that I write to you on this beginning of another beautiful Vyasa Puja celebration? Because my need to write to you is every single day. Sometimes I write a lot, sometimes just a little sometimes more than once a day, reading a writing on your special day of appearance on this earth would not capture even an iota of a piece of gratitude that I feel for you and your mercy. I am so thankful to you, Gurudev, for allowing me to come to you, for letting me remember you. It's only your mercy and love and remembrance of others that lets this even happen. Thank you, my Guru Dave, for walking this life with me. Thank you for your books. Thank you for your words. That every day penetrate deeper and deeper into the heart, even through all the years of reading them. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to remember you and to run to you. Thank you for your shelter, even in the most traumatic instances of life. Thank you for your shelter, your guidance from my heart and your protection and for letting me find shelter also in Jesus, which were the roots of my devotion. 
at a time when I was young and needing to find something more than this world will ever offer. Thank you, Gurudev, for the pain and for my fears and for my helplessness so much. <laughs> and it's only because you were there and are here that everything is always okay. I had no idea of so many things that this body cannot possibly begin to fathom. And the way that it captures us, things that takes place. And yet you offer us deep shelter all the time. And it's only your mercy that I can remember you. Thank you for protecting my two daughters, Nadia Radhika and Gita Nalini, mm -hmm. and for allowing you, allowing us, allowing you to remain in the center of our house. I can't even begin to write properly, Gurudev, just like I speak. I wasn't certain that I would be chosen to share today, but I guess I am. Um, I don't know how I can possibly glorify your personality properly, Gurudev. I am so grateful for the arrangements that you have created for me. Even as I beg for things that I think might be good, I thank you for your continuous intervention of love and guiding it in your time. You are the doer. Thank you for growing inside of the hearts of my daughters, even as they struggle, helping them also to see that <laughs> the only real shelter is inside of the loving arms of the divine couple, which I teach them is in the heart. Thank you for keeping us with you, Gurudev. I write this and I do kind of like a doodle when I do it. I'm almost finished. Please allow us through the confusion and trials of this world at each step to run to you and also to share these truths and the realness and the magnitude of the gifts that you give us with others all the time. Please let us share with everyone. Please help me to be your instrument. I have no idea of your plans for me. Almost 17 years of teaching, and now other doors are opening. I pray to serve in other capacities through your guidance. Thank you so much for your shelter, Gurudev. You are the only shelter, not the so-called stability that the world speaks of. You have been there in all of our days, in all of these years, and even in my lack of understanding, which I still possess so much. Guru Dave, thank you for letting me have devotees in my life. Thank you for the arrangements of being able to read and to hear and to join. I make so many mistakes, Guru, and you are so loving and kind to help me try to learn more and more every day. I can understand that it is only in taking some things away from our lives or holding the very things such as my kids in your hands that's teaching me to run to you more. I can see I have so much learning to do and I pray to be permitted Gurudev to always remember to you and to run to you and to living and to listen to your loving God sisters and God brothers, and also my God sisters and God brothers. Thank you, Guru Dave. Jorko, you're Davy Daffy. Hadi, Hadi, Bull, thank you so much for that beautiful offering. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Uh, you know how to bring the tears, don't you? <laughs> I, I was trying to get through this without being tearful, but it's very complicated, huh? So thank you, Prabhu. I, I see Anasuya's on. Someone was just asking about. I want uh, Hari Bo, Hari Krishna. Yes, I, I see. heard us on the phone. Yeah, and Alfred uh, Agni Vaish is on the phone too. Uh, I can, see. Since Curtis has been waiting for an hour to get on, is it possible for him to go? Can he please? Sure. Did you were you able to connect? Hari Bo. All right, go can ahead. You hear me? Yes. I'm gonna get off so they can get on. Hello. Yes. Can you guys, can you hear him? Yes, okay. I can hear him. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. I was I was waiting <laughs> for my turn to come on. Uh, I'm glad to have an opportunity to talk to everybody about 
uh, Swami Christopala, uh, also known as John Favors. I've known him since he was five years old. His brother Paul and I were the best of friends. I was uh, four years older than than than, than, uh, than Christopala, and he and his uh, his brother Paul and I were, were close friends all through high school, and we went to the prom together. We were dressed alike in tux and tails. Mm-hmm. We were the only ones at the prom that were dressed alike. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's a, a great pleasure to, to to talk about him in his earlier years. We all, like Marguerite said, we all went to church at St. Paul's, and we used to hang out uh, at at, at Chris Napala's house. Uh, Mrs. Perlene Favors used to allow, allow us to come in if we go to church on Sunday. <laughs> church on Sunday. And we were all singers. Yes. We learned to sing. Myself, uh, Kenny Red, uh, uh, Richard Norris, and Ronnie Cooper, all of us was in the back room. There was enough room for all four or five of us to get in there. And we learned how to sing uh, a group harmony. Mm. Uh, we sang the Temptations records, the Impressions. Like the brother said, that uh, they we liked the Motown. And every time a new Motown record would come on, <laughs> <laughs> we would learn the words and we would sing the words without any music so Kenny Red was our acting director he would direct all of us as to what parts we should sing uh, we learned how to sing first tenor, second tenor baritone and bass and lead, as well as lead singing so at this time I'm still a professional singer I sing with a 16 piece orchestra and one band <laughs> a 17-piece orchestra in another band, and an 18-piece orchestra in another band. I sing with three bands, and we all have. I have now have music written in my key by a man that wrote all the music for the Supremes and the Temptations and the Four Tops. He was from Cleveland. His name is Willie Smith. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anybody know of, or heard of heard of him, but he's a Grammy Award-winning arranger that the Motown people didn't want to mention his name because they would have had to pay him more money. Uh, every morning we walk to school together myself Kenny Red Richard Norris and Paul and and Johnny's uh, brother Paul we all walk walk to school together and if you mess with one of us you gotta mess with all of us (laughs) we never had no problem nobody trying to whoop up on none of us because we would all stick together as if, if we were brothers you know and we had a, the utmost respect for John because he was the first one that wanted to learn the spiritual writings of some of the masters that were at the time. Uh, people like uh, Yogi Rama uh, uh some of the other yogis that had a series of books out, and we read all of them. And then I was drafted into the Army in 1966 through 68. That's when he was at Hawkins School, and uh, he went on to Princeton. I ran back into him after I got out of the service. But I don't want to take up everybody's time. So oh no, no, you you can keep you can keep talking. I you you were sharing about the singing, and did you share that little pastime when you guys would be in the little hallway in the back of the room, or we the back of the room, and then everybody would uh, Kenny Red would be like the music director. He would get everybody. <laughs> who was a, a, a flat note, or you were out of key. Mm-hmm. You had the ability to hear very, very well. Die. And he all of us how to sing in groups. And then when I got into Miss Ross's talent show at East Tech, uh, Kenny Red and his band at the time, they backed me up. Yeah. Oh, uh, I forgot uh, all about that. You know, we, we used to have these talent shows uh, at East Technical High School, and Mrs. Ross was one of the sponsors for it. And uh, we would invite the moments, the uh, the stylistics. They would be some of the uh, entertainers that would actually come to perform at our school, East Tech, for these talent shows. And, of course, I was one of the dancers, you know what I mean? I would love to, you know, we, we all had dancers. We were like the, like a shindig, you know? Yeah. And um, go ahead, go ahead, uh, Curtis. It was, it was like, uh... It was like we had a, uh, an all-out outing that, ha- outing that happened once a year. 
Yes. And uh, the first time I tried to get him as far as talent shows, <laughs> you know, because he didn't know the song and he didn't know what Kenny was singing in. So <laughs> I waited another year and I practiced with Kenny Red and all of the music guys that were in the band at the time. The band was name was the, was the Precision at the time. And they were one of the best bands in the school. Jai, uh, right. I learned how mm-hmm. I learned how to sing lead like that with Kenny's help. And uh, Johnny was more or less, he was more or less a, a singer. He wasn't that much of a singer, but he was always there listening to us, you know. And he, he enjoyed us being around us too, you know. Yeah, but Maharaj could dance now. He was he was a dancer, yeah, you know. He, he, he could I, cut I, a rug, okay? Nobody <laughs> mentioned the fact that he was uh, yeah, uh, a girlfriend was named Carmen Sledge, who was a who was a cheerleader. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I guess you know about Carmen Sledge. I have oh a yes, of- she was a varsity cheerleader. Absolutely. Right, right. Um, I I wanted to show that picture, but uh, we'll probably be able to do that some other time. You know. Um, well, well, I have it on my phone, so and, you have uh, it on your phone. Um, yeah. I don't know how we can even see it. Can we see yeah. it? I wanted you to show, you know, you you sent a an art picture to Maharaj. You know, you're he's a Curtis is the artist too, you guys. He he draws very nicely. And I don't know if I can show this picture that he gave to Maharaj. Maybe someone else is able to see this. Can we can I we on my phone earlier? I saw uh-huh. on my phone earlier and it, it uh, was just a a picture of uh, uh of Krishna. Uh-huh. And, and, and on the right side, it was uh, Swami Prabhupada. Okay. The original picture I painted was painted on a canvas, and it was about 52 inches. Let me get to it. Let me find it again. Let's go back. Okay. Yeah, I want to show that picture. One second, Prabhu. You sent it to me. Here it is right here. Can we see that? Wow. wow. This is this is some of his Curtis's work, you know? Yes. Well, I went to uh, I went to Cooper School of Art after I left East Tech. Mm-hmm. I went to Tri C and I, I stayed there for about two or three years, and I graduated in 1977. And then I went to the Cleveland Institute of Art, and I studied over there for about three years. I studied printmaking, which is lithography. Mm-hmm. I studied uh, uh, life drawing. We had some very naked models. I enjoyed the girls, but I didn't like the boys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Hi, uh, Uh, Is okay. there anything else that you can share about Guru that made you feel as though, um, you know, uh, what made you, you know, how did he change your life? Because he affected so many people, you know, so differently. He did. He gave me encouragement. Uh, we, was, we were studying at Morris American Institute together. Mm-hmm. And uh, he learned how to read Sanskrit, and I didn't know anything about Sanskrit, so he taught me some of the things about Sanskrit. And I, I got some of the books uh, that he wrote uh, after he, you know, after I got back from the service, I started buying his books. Mm-hmm. I still have a few of them around here somewhere, but it was a lot of fun to be able to study with him. He was a lot of encouragement to me as a person who wanted to be an artist and a singer. And so I'm trying my best to maintain the talent that I, God has blessed me with, the singing, and, as, and I sing mostly jazz now. And I sing uh, a lot of spirituals for funerals, like I sang at his brother's Paul's funeral, mm-hmm. uh, was just about two or three months ago. Yes. Uh... Mm-hmm. Marguerite, uh, she wasn't there, but uh, Judy was there. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Paul's uh, sons and the families were there. So, Jai Prabhu, Curtis, thank you so much, Prabhu. I don't want you know. I, we're gonna save some more for for the next time. How's that? You know. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, I I think we're getting ready to come to a close. I think is that correct, Krishna Shakti Prabhu? And thank you. thank you so very much, Prabhu. Thank you so much. I was I was glad to, to know that I got through some kind of way. Right. Yeah. Thank uh, you. I'm just the first. Go ahead. And I wanted to share that picture that I showed. Maybe I'll be able to show it at, a, at another time. On a maybe uh, I'll email it to everyone. 
that way they'll be able to get a better picture of it. Because we're trying to find out where that picture is. Maharaj, you presented that to him some years ago, right? And it's somewhere, someone has that, that, that uh, painting. Someone has it, but we're just trying to locate where it is. So anyway, thank you so much, very much. Thanks for getting me on. All thank right. you. <laughs> Appreciate it, everybody. Thanks. Thanks for everything. All right. Thank you, Prabhu. Okay, thank right. you. Bye. Krishna Shakti Prabhu? Yes, yes, yes. Thank okay. you. Okay. It's been a spectacular afternoon with so much nectar coming from the family and friends and getting all these wonderful pastimes and then disciples <laughs> and well wishers. It's just been an amazing event. So we are shifting gears. And right now, I just want you all to sit back and relax. <laughs> We are going to watch a video from Gurudev. Hadi <laughs> All right. When devotees at the BBT uh, in Europe uh, asked if I could give some basic words of encouragement in relationship to Srila Prabhupada's books. Because as we know, Prabhupada's books are the nucleus, they're the artery of our society. In, in scripture, we have what is called the Paribhasa Sutra. That is the verse uh, that helps us to understand, you know, the entire text. The seed is like the seed that all other things uh, of a particular text are uh, to be, to complement and to be uh, in accord with. So if we think about it, our in, in terms of our institution, Prabhupada's books are the paribhasa for our institution, that our whole lives are to be so much centered uh, around his his books. I'm in an unusual situation now. Of course, I'm handicapped, uh, terminally ill with, with cancer, at least according to what, what the doctors are saying. Uh, I have one and a half leg. My leg has been amputated, and I've lost you know, almost 40 pounds. And I'm just hoping most of that weight that's been lost is false ego that's, that's going away. And anyway, on a, on a more uh, uh, serious note, by modern technology, I'm having a chance to, to be with you. It was so much my desire, and Krishna is, is fulfilling that, even for a few minutes, just to be able to share uh, some points here. Uh, Baba Nanda and a few other devotees report how Srila Prabhupada had mentioned that he didn't really, really didn't want to come here. And obviously, who, who of a higher nature would want to come to this horrible place, you know, of Marcha Loka, of so much degradation and lust and greed. But Prabhupada said how uh, Krishna had encouraged him, you go and, and you write books and I will help you. So it seems very significant that we constantly keep in mind that Prabhupada coming to this world hey. was so much in connection with his commission in providing trans transcendental literatures. It seems so important that we uh, uh, remind ourselves how Prabhupada was up in the middle of the night and how he struggled so much to see, to see that these books would be able to be available for the world and how he, he read his own books. So if he read his own books, how much more important it is for us to read them in a scrutinizing way as he was such a puppet for the uh, previous Acharyas. And in the Chaitanya Chaitanya it explains how such great pure devotees, when they're writing, it's in the spirit of sitting down and Krishna is, is, is actually speaking through them. Practically, the majority of us, we came to this movement due to having contact with one of Prabhupada's books. And if we came another way, we became situated and convinced to remain in the society after, after reading Sri Prabhupada's books. And so many of ourselves as leaders, if you think about it, we're leaders because we're involved in printing the books, distributing the books, selling the books. And in many cases from the past, and for, and for some of us, or some of you, 
We're still expertly uh, doing that now, printing Prabhupada's books in so many, many different languages. I, I was reading all kinds of literatures and took initiation from <laughs> all kinds of gurus. And then I read the Sri Yashapanasha, and I was finished. Because from reading that, it gave more clarity than all of the books, you know, that I had uh, read. And it helped to clarify uh, karma and moksha and artha and dharma, and most important, it helped me to understand what in fact was Sanatana Dharma that was missing in the other books I read and the other teachers that I'd taken shelter of. Let me just try to uh, conclude one or two short points. Just as Prabhupada came into this world to make books available to us, we see that in his last days, and even last, practically last hours, how much he was trying to make sure that the transcendental message was received. How he died on the battlefield. So from Prabhupada's uh, enemy to this universe and his departure, we see the importance uh, of his books. So we want to go out of our way, constantly go the extra mile to honor Srila Prabhupada. And how do we do it? We read the books, we distribute the books, we print the books, we worship the books. But most important is that, as Prabhupada said himself about Gita Nagari prophecy and the relationship to, uh, to Gandhi, that the best way to honor a person is not by monuments, not by horrific kind of glorifications, but by creating a community that represents the ideas that that person stood for. So let us uh, work like hell and try to see more how we can create communities that will represent the ideas that Prabhupada has given us in his books. We don't want to abuse the books by beating each other over the head with things taken out of the books. Sometimes we take things out of context, or we use the philosophy just to beat someone and to try to force them in some way based on our ulterior motives. But we want to worship the books by creating a community that represents what Prabhupada wrote in his books. That means by going deeper and appreciating the essence of the books, living it, and then we can share it as a wonderful, powerful, international community. Hare Krishna, thank you for allowing me to be with you. And I'm excited, uh, hoping that we'll all be able to be together more, especially as we keep this Paribhasa uh, forefront, as Prabhupada's books, as the artery, as a major seed, major seed for our existence. Hare Krishna. Jai. Excellent, excellent, excellent. We got a little taste of Guru Dave to finish off this wonderful day. Uh, this has been an excellent day. Uh, beautiful talks by the family and friends. We've had guest speakers. We've had Cleveland Yatra sharing their nectar uh, with us. And so what we are going to do now is conclude this program. I want to thank you all for coming. And uh, tomorrow we are going to have a 20 country tour. So there are going to be several countries from Australia, Croatia, Eastern Europe, Western Europe. And we're going to actually be able, we're going to actually be able to also get a tour of Guru Day's house, uh, visit Gita Nagri, uh, visit the IFAST Institute in DC. In the evening, we'll have the African devotees and some Russian devotees. And on Sunday, we're going to have our first inaugural global summit. And we will have a couple of speakers that will speak about leadership and 
take us into uh, sharing preaching strategies. So remember, if you would like to share your what you're working on in terms of projects, in terms of serving Guru Dave, and also sharing preaching strategies, please let me know. Uh, you can text, uh, what you can send a send in uh, a text to me via this forum. <laughs> and also, if you have any questions that you would like to ask or express feelings at the Ishtagoshti, let me know so I can put your name on the list. So far, I have very few devotees, so please let me know who would like to speak so we can organize it accordingly. And then finally, we're gonna have our special guest speaker at the end, Radhana Swami. And we're gonna have a wonderful interview with Bhuta Bhavana. And then we will have concluding remarks by Mother Jambavati. And then we will just wrap this wonderful program up. So thank you all for coming out. And I look forward to continuing this nectar for the next two days. Hari Hari Bo. Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Everybody. Hare Krishna, devotees. Hari Bo. Hari Bo. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna